Yep, Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz, we already upset Chris, bro. We uh, we did. It's your Chris fault. Got, <laughs> Chris got the most fire sneaker collection for a dad ever. I mean, it's unbelievable. He just comes in with sneaky heat every single day. He's got nice dad shoes. And they're nah, comfortable. Nah, that's not even dad shoes. Chris got it. Chris got it. That's heat heat? That's heat heat. Okay. Okay. Uh, welcome to another week of the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. How we feeling, guys? Feeling good. How are you? I feel blessed, black, and highly favored, man. Um, that's good. LeBron James just got swept. Whew. Thoughts. Whew. Let's get right to it. Whew. Yo, it's it's really interesting because when you watch highlights of Jokic, um, everything looks lucky. <laughs> it does, right? You know what I mean? It like does. every highlight I see, I'm like, oh, that shit was pure luck. It does. And everything looks like that shot LeBron shot when you look like he was trying to throw an alley oop and it went in. And and it went in. That's, yeah. Yes, yes. It so does. you're like, this guy can't be that good because he just keeps getting lucky and I'm just seeing highlights. Mm -hmm. But then you actually watch the game. And even though he's he's in slow mo and he got the highest dribble, he just finds a way to be so fucking effective and elite. It's unbelievable. And it like, shows me how much being in the right market uh, can do for you because Jokic has been a two time MVP and nobody's realizing how good he is until right now because we've been watching his games <laughs> so much yep. in prime time. Right market, yo. right market, and. Um, or winning a championship. Winning a championship. So could we, with Giannis, Giannis was doing that in Milwaukee for so long, and we knew it. Mm -hmm. But when he made that run and won a ring, everybody was like, yo, that guy is incredible. And the tricky thing about Jokic is like, his game doesn't really lend itself to highlights. Like, you've seen a big man throw a cool pass. You're like, oh, that's cool. But it doesn't need to be on SportsCenter Top 10. Yeah. And then you see the stat sheet, and it's crazy. Stupid. And you're like, whoa, Stupid. this guy's really controlling the game. I wonder if he's like a, and again, I didn't get to watch enough of this. And I don't even think, Chris, you were old enough to watch. But like like the way that they said Bill Russell could control a game. But he's way more offensively savvy than Russell. But defensively and rebounding, what Bill Russell could do to a game, the way he could dominate it. Is that what Jokic is doing? Yeah, I mean, I think, I, I, I can't really think, maybe Olajuwon. Without the assists. Elijah yeah, Wan didn't have yeah, the pass yeah, and he had a yeah. little bit more scoring. Elijah was, was way more fluid. He was so athletic, yeah, man. Yeah, like, way more athletic. Yeah, I don't know. This, I mean, Jokic moves like one of them like uh, elephant robots in Star Wars. Do you know the ones yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. he's just slow and plodding, yeah. but there's something about him where he's always balanced. Yeah. So he never has to like pick up his dribble without knowing what he's doing. And he's just like... So unassuming. Yeah. Like, that's the other thing, too. It's like, even no, no matter how good he is or how many games we see him dominate, you still sleep on him when he's out there. Every bit. single time. Right now, I'm <laughs> sleeping on him. <laughs> and you know he won. Bro. And he's in shape because he looks pudgy and he looks slow. But the, the guy, the, I don't think he took a minute off last night. I think Tyson he played Fury the at basketball? Is he in shape? Tyson, no, Tyson Fury's not in shape. Tyson Fury at basketball? He might be the Tyson Fury of basketball. Tyson Fury of basketball, yeah. He might be the Tyson Fury of basketball. Oh, wow. Tyson Fury of basketball. You want to know something wild about this? So the the uh, president of the Nuggets, the guy who put together this team, mm -hmm. right, is not the current president. He left to go take the job in Minnesota. Right. Mm. Right? But he put together this team. Jamal Murray tears his ACL, what is it, like a year or two ago? Yeah. And it took him like a whole year to come back. Yeah. The so boat. the new president of the team is going to get all the credit for doing nothing. Damn. Like they, they, they didn't even, they didn't match uh, Tim Connolly's contract. Right, so he t and he had the offer up in Minnesota. So he's like, I gotta do what's right for my family. Yeah, I gotta absolutely. go take it. The team he put together with the same coach, That's all crazy. the same stars, all the same trades, the the whole thing, everything that he put in place could win the championship. And then he's not gonna get the credit for that because he's with another team. No, and, they, and he went on to make one of the worst trades of all time once he got there, which is the Rudy Gobert trade. Why is that a bad trade? <sighs> Uh, it's not working It's only yeah. been a year. It was a year. It looks bad. And they gave up like five firsts and a lot of young talent. Yeah, I didn't understand that. I didn't understand that whole seven first round picks or whatever the fuck it was. So what was the idea? The idea is like a super dominant big Twin like Towers. That. Twin Carl Towers. Carl Anthony Towns, Rudy Gobert. Yeah. And yeah, that's just a really tricky thing. You could see how having a big creates crazy matchup difficulties if they're as skilled as Jokic. Yeah, but which is what? One in a million? That's the thing. <laughs> like, that's the thing. If you're like, not as skilled as Jokic. Now, here's the thing. Carl maybe Anthony, Embiid might be close. Yeah. But even, I'll be honest with you, with Embiid, I think Embiid found a game too late. What you mean? 
they say that with with smaller players, they find the game. And with bigger guys, the game finds them. Mm. You're walking around 6'6 in fucking middle school. All of a sudden, the high school coach is walking up to you going, have you played basketball before? Try, you know, and... Because of that, they just don't log the same amount of hours. You look at a guy like Kyrie Irving, right, who has had 200,000 hours just dribbling a basketball. He has been in every possible situation. It is impossible to rattle Kyrie Irving Mm -hmm. outside of, like, watching YouTube videos at 2 in the morning. There is nothing that could, like, (laughs) blow his mind on a basketball court. You you send a double team to him. You send a triple team to him. He's already thinking four moves ahead. He's out of there. He is a... Absolute basketball genius, right? Because he's been playing since he's a fucking toddler. You don't think it's nothing Stuff. that you could, could rattle Kyrie? Maybe Kyrie just ain't heard the right trash talk. What does he have to? What What do you have to say? Anti Semite, like the whole crowd just chanting. Oh, I think that's when he starts dropping bucks. Yeah, like they really, really, yeah. really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to scare him, be like the Jews are coming. It's my time now. <laughs> <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> But yeah, so it's like, I think a lot of times with the the bigger players, and I think Jokic is the exception, is the bigger players, they start to get rattled in the playoffs. Yeah. Because when you throw certain things at them, they just haven't had the hours of play against it like a young player has. When a guy like Jokic, he plays the game like he's been playing since he's two years old. Mm. Like that's the only thing he's done his entire life. Yeah, and I think he started playing late, if I'm not mistaken. Jokic? I thought I read that nah, somewhere. He, he nah. played as a kid. He Them did? motherfuckers oh. out there only play basketball and soccer. There's oh, like okay, two okay. sports. Where is he from again? Slovenia or whatever? He's Serbian. Serbian? Yeah. Let me double check. But still, like, that's what you do. Especially if you're tall over there, you're, yeah, playing, yeah, yeah. you're playing basketball. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting, man. And also, too, I think what this playoffs is showing us is, like, that whole era of pairing superstars, that shit was never really going to work. And you have to have a team. Miami's a great basketball team. The Nuggets are a great team. Those players have spent time together. There's a system there, right? Oh, you're saying chemistry over superstars. Chemistry over superstars all day. Because we really haven't seen the super team thing work. Yes. When? Miami? The The Golden State Warriors. Yeah, Warriors, Why do we say that? That was the draft. Like, KD came into a system that was already there. Like, that was a plug-and-play system. Harrison Barnes was giving people buckets before KD came. All they did was sign KD in free agency and place them in a system. Okay, okay, okay. So, so Boston, I, the big three. Yeah, okay. There's a, there's a thing there's a thing we have to look here. So, are you saying that it doesn't count as having a super team if there are superstars that have come up within the yeah, system? Yeah, if it's through the draft, okay. if it's through the system. Because like, Golden State Warriors— was a super team. They just developed those players. Absolutely, like but Dr- it's still Draymond super is a team. second round pick. Still like a, Jokic. Yes, you know what I mean. But he is he, especially in his heyday, was a superstar because of that system. N- I, I think he is a superstar. No, no, I mean that sincerely. I think now it's yes, not, he is. But but I think that system helps him a lot. Of course, of course, of course. I'm not taking away from the system. I'm not taking away from the coaching. What I'm saying is. They had the arguably the two greatest shooters to ever be on the That's same right. team together. And then you add KD to that mix. And then you have the greatest offensive player in history. Like that is a super team. It just, like you were saying, was developed with from within for the most part. And because of that, they have this kind of innate That's chemistry. Right. That team won a championship and went 73 and nine before KD came there. No, no, there's no <laughs> doubt. I, we're on the same page with that. I, I just thought you were saying just because you have superstars doesn't mean you're gonna win. You can win with superstars as long as they're baked in. You gotta have chemistry. role players, man. Cause yeah. think about it. They put the heat together. Son, the they, heat, they gutted that team to put the heat together. Think about the heat right now. Their star two guard is injured. Yep. Victor Oladipo. Mm-hmm. Yep. Their star six man is injured. Hero, Tyler Hero. Tyler Hero. Yep. Mm-hmm. Two of their most recognizable players aren't even playing, and they're an eighth seed. That is going to be in the championship. Yeah, it's great. Great system. Great system. And great an inc- coaching. And incredibly unique super talent in Jimmy Butler. Jimmy's he different. He is an incredibly unique super talent. I saw uh, Ryan Davis and I saw other people saying that, because Ryan never believed in the will to win thing, which I think is crazy, mm-hmm. right? But you can't believe in it if you've never seen it. Right. 
But he said watching Jimmy Butler makes him believe everything he didn't believe about Michael Jordan. Yeah, that was a good wow. Time. The things yeah. we used to say about when we said Michael Jordan had a, a undeniable will, will to win. win. When yeah. Michael was on the court, it didn't matter what the score yeah. was. Yeah. You knew Michael was going to find a way to win the game. That's how people are looking at Jimmy Butler. Yeah. But it's not Michael Jordan level, guys. And when you have that will to win, it makes the players around you play better. Absolutely. Because that's Absolutely. what that's what Butler's doing. And what, what do you mean by that? That's like, interesting. He's playing so hard that everybody around him, they don't ball like that, but everybody's balling. Yeah, we and forget Jimmy was hurt. At the beginning like of in the, the Knicks series, he, he turned his <laughs> fucking ankle. But wait a minute. So, so are you saying that they're seeing his effort and they're trying to match his effort? Or are you saying that his dominance makes them feel more confident and then they can play? I think it's all of it. Combination of both. I yeah. think it's a combination of all yeah. of that. Like, that's what Michael had. Michael had an undeniable will to win. He was already better than everybody on the court. Yeah. But it was just something about his DNA that was like, I'm not losing this game. Yeah. Y'all come with me. Yeah. But his teammates were terrified of him. I don't think the Heat are terrified of Butler. You don't think so? No. I Maybe think not. Yeah, it's you're a right. different yeah. energy. I it think feels a lot more like we. Right. The Miami Heat feel like we, where everybody still holds each other accountable. Like, don't be lazy, don't fuck up. But right. we're in this together. And the Bulls were, it's like everybody was attached to the greatest athlete in the history of But it was still a we professional there, athletics. It was still a we. Like the Bulls, we don't, I don't know why we don't, we talk about Michael and Pippen, but don't talk about their amazing role players that they had it's throughout Tony that Kukoc. whole run. There's like Kukoc, yeah. Rodman, Horace Grant. I think that those guys get Paxson, BJ uh, Armstrong, Steve now, now, Kerr. Now you're getting a little crazy, but, but <laughs> I, 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 feel, I feel those guys get credit. Paxson and Armstrong and Kerr? Yeah, 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 yeah. They, had, they actually saved the Bulls a couple of times. Kerr and Paxson, definitely. No, they did their job, which was to hit open threes. That's right. They didn't save the Bulls. Michael Jordan saves them by being down 12 and then bringing them within Absolutely. two points with three seconds Absolutely. left. You know, I'm not, you know something interesting? This is a good point. Yeah. Rob Parker was on Breakfast Club. Okay. Rob Parker was saying he can't put Steph Curry as the greatest shooter of all time because he said, if you had to pick between Ray Allen, Steph Curry, and Reggie Miller, four seconds left, who would you give the ball to to hit the final shot? Mm. And he was saying Reggie and uh, Ray have done that more. And I'm like, well, by that logic, Robert Ory is the greatest shooter of all time. Right. <laughs> by right. that logic. Great fucking point. You know Sean. what I'm saying? Great fucking point, Sean. Like, yeah, that's not how we're judging greatest shooters no. all the time. If we want to have a clutch conversation, we could do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah clutch yeah. conversation is a very different conversation. Mm. You're going to start having to put in different people in there. I mean, Kobe, Braun, yes. incredibly clutch. And what's funny is in the beginning of his career, everybody was talking about how he was a choke artist. Turns out, statistically, there's only one person that's hit more fourth quarter go-ahead buckets in the last uh, three minutes or whatever the way you define a clutch shot is. I think and it's I about think it's, when you hit them, though. I think it's cool. Well, that's what I'm saying, within the last three minutes. No, I'm saying this, I think it's about when you hit them. If it's the last three minutes of game 42 in the regular season. Uh, yeah, yeah, playoff games. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. If it's playoffs and yeah. the NBA finals, it's different. That's when legends are made. Well, I think nobody's done it to the level of Reggie Miller. And maybe I felt that more because I'm a Knicks fan, but like... Reggie's ability to shoot the ball in clutch situations was unprecedented. Well, we hold people to moments, right? And I realized that when LeBron and the Lakers were down 3-0 and everybody was like, He's, you know how he gets. <laughs> no, we don't. He's done yeah. this one time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, the yeah, yeah. State yeah, yeah, We don't yeah. know how he gets. With Reggie Miller, even though he was super clutch, but it's that we, everybody thinks about that one time when he hit the three, then stole the ball and hit another three with yeah. five seconds left or some shit how like many, that. How, what was it, seven points in four seconds oh or something crazy? But he, he had a crazy one on Jordan, and yep. towards the end of his career, he had two or three crazy ones on the Nets in the playoffs. I mean, he was very consistent. He was that clutch. dude. Yeah. He was nah, that dude. was phenomenal. Yeah. He was phenomenal. He was phenomenal. LeBron he said he's consider, considering retirement. Yo, can I ask a question real quick? Mm -hmm. I wonder if there's a height component to clutch shooting. What do you mean? It's easier to get your shot off when you're 6'11 or whatever Robert Ory is. When you're 6'7 going up against like a 6'2 guard like uh, Reggie Miller was. When you're 6'7 or 6'6 like Kobe or Jordan. Like 
Steph, it's it's objectively harder for him to get his shot Hell off. Hell yeah. And he can do it effectively during the game, but maybe in those clutch moments, because I think that's what some people are saying right now. They're like, oh, Steph has missed, uh, he's over 12 in clutch go-ahead yeah. baskets or whatever. But I wonder if like these guys that we see as clutch shooters just get a much clearer shot at the end of the game by proxy of how much taller they are than the guys defending them. You what know what's so crazy? Ray Allen, though. Ray Allen was like 6'6", six, six, though. Yo, I don't, I don't see Ray as a clutch shooter. Really? I, nah, Ray he clutch. only hit that corner three. But see, that go he had yeah. a signature clutch shot at UConn. Those are the two. Yeah, I, I, that's I, my yeah, point. I, I forgot Moments. about the college thing. And then the, the one in the corner... I'm like, yeah, you hit it, but it's the easiest shot to hit in the NBA. A corner three, you, you're talking about foul line extended. Like, it's not like a big, like you should hit an open clutch. It's very moments. fluid how he caught it in one. Yo, yeah, all the credit in the world, but I'm not putting him up there with Reggie and Kobe because he hit that one. Reggie and Kobe were getting theirs. Mm -hmm. Like, Ray got a yeah, tip yeah, yeah, rebound yeah, yeah. thrown to him, and I can't throw you up there with the goats for that. I mean- Jordan jumped up in Ray the air. Ray was a phenomenal shooter, though. No, 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 no. There's no question yeah, phenomenal yeah. shooter. But, like, Jordan jumped up against Cleveland, jumped up in the air, waited for the white guy to fall, <laughs> then shot it. That's fucking buckets He right did there. that a bunch of times. Byron Russell in the final. Those are the things we remember. But yeah. that's what I mean. It's about when you do it. The reason Ray has that clutch, uh, you know, uh, stigma yeah. is because of the college shot. It's because of uh, yeah. Miami. Jordan been doing that since college. Yeah, I remember, remember the UNC Carolina. shot yep. at the finals. Uh, that's the championship game. Yep. Like, yep. Yeah. Yeah. When you get it, you get it. Yeah, I think it's like, who are you most afraid of? Like, I'm, I, I'm afraid of Michael Jordan with that basketball. I'm afraid of Kobe Bryant with that basketball. I'll be honest. I got Bird. PTSD. Yo, son. Bird? Bro. Bird? 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 Bird you are getting... not blocking the shot. Bird kind of getting lost in the in the sauce, man. Yo, but that's life, bro. That's the Bird might game. be number two behind Jordan. I hate to say it. You yo, yo, I hated him. If you don't you, stop. Yo, yo. No, 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 hold up, hold up. Have you have you guys heard that? Have you guys heard the story? <laughs> guy's crazy. Have you guys heard the story, the uh, bird story? Uh they come out of the huddle. There's uh there's uh one second left or something like that. One second left, down by down by one. Uh Dennis Johnson is gonna be inbounding it. Okay. Uh play gets written up by the coach. And it's going to Danny Ainge, okay? So DJ, Dennis Johnson, is like, okay, I got to get the ball to Ainge. DJ's a rookie, I think, right? The ball's got to go to Danny Ainge, got to go to Danny Ainge. That's what it is. They break the huddle. Uh, Bird goes, okay, let's do this. Everybody breaks. As they're walking onto the floor, Bird walks up to DJ, goes, just give me the ball. And <laughs> DJ goes, what? He goes, just give me the ball. Right? So DJ is a fucking rookie, right? He's about to defy his coach in a last second shot situation. It's like, what the fuck do I do? Uh, gets the ball inbound, it gets it to Bird. Bird hits the game, winning shot, done. Danny Ainge is fucking furious. <laughs> and it's like that, but that's Bird. That's Bird. That dude. The Bird, listen, Bird is dope. I, you know, I was, I was alive for Bird. I saw Bird, but number two behind Jordan, stop. I'm going to say this as a like, Magic 8 is lunch. Did he? <laughs> what you talking about? I don't about? know. About, I, mean, I don't know. Oh, beat the I don't know about Magic that. Magic said Bird is the greatest of all time. Not second. Until Michael came around. No, no, no. That was when Michael was playing no, Magic. He didn't. No, he didn't. Magic. No, no, no. That's no, a little slight to Jordan too. No, I, think. Yeah, no. I don't I mean, agree. No, no. I think that's Magic going. This is my number one competitor, to, yeah. so I'm going to give it to the guy that I battled with. Yeah. Magic beat him in college. Beat him. In, I mean, even though they did beat the Lakers too in the finals, but uh, Lakers beat them in the finals like what twice? Yeah, but Magic had a much better team. Like, it's not even. Nah, Bird had a good team. Bird had a good team. Bird, yo, that Celtics was beast. Just name the other guy. Kevin that, McHale. No, 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 name the other guy that happens to be on the Lakers. Kareem. Kareem. Say that one again. Kareem. Who is arguably. It's true. The greatest NBA player of all time if he wasn't such a, a dickhead true. outside of basketball. If Kareem was like a likable, fun guy outside of basketball, he would probably still be marketed as the greatest. How likable do we want a 111-year-old man to be, y'all? <laughs> like, 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 at some yeah, point, you don't need to be too likable. What's up, man? Why yeah, do we yeah. do that to Kareem? Like, nah, but he was never, though. 
That's the thing. Some people said he was a jerk. I like Kareem, but that's the reputation he had. So yeah. that never people. Also, his name is terrifying to white people. There, there's like a lot of <laughs> there's like a lot of things going he on. Was, like, he was an airplane. He had a great scene in airplane. <laughs> there you go. He was in that Bruce Lee joint too. Right, yeah. For all we know, Kareem might have wanted to be fun, but nobody ever was fun with him. Yo, that yo, you what, know if, how you, you, what if he had a great sense of humor? They just didn't. And get nobody it. even wanted to fight. Yeah. Like, he's too serious. You yeah. know what I mean? He's like, that's no, why he's you being gotta sarcastic. try everybody with a joke. I try everybody with a joke. Yeah. And I go, I try to go raunchy first, just to set the tone. Just to set the tone yeah. and see what they're about. Yeah. You'll what, be surprised. What would you say to Kareem? I'd be like, oh, man, how long have you been scaring white people with that name? <laughs> Just to see, break the ice, you know what I mean? And what do you think he would do? I have no fucking idea. What do you think? Maybe he just pulls his dick out, slaps you on the top of the head with it. Oh. <laughs> dick jokes always get you there. <laughs> Who? Kareem. Really? Oh, yeah, he's in Dave. Kareem did an episode of Dave. I'm oh, bugging. respect, respect. Kareem did an episode of Dave. Kareem probably been wanting to be fun <laughs> all these years, did, did, did and nobody's been giving him that you, fun. Did you hear the, the Kareem story he tells about Will Chamberlain? No. He goes, he goes, Will Chamberlain is one of the most motivating people in my life, but he was an unbelievable asshole. And the interview's like, what are you talking oh, about? He goes, he goes, he had an unbelievable asshole. He goes, uh, he goes, I mean, one time we were in the an elevator, and uh, we're in this building, and a guy walks in, and he sees... Um, Will Chamberlain and he's excited. And, you know, he tries to say something funny to him, and uh, and he uh, he goes, uh, "Hey, Wilt, uh, how's the weather up there?" And Will looks at him and spits in his face. Spits in Korean's face? No, you don't listen. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you. I got so distracted because I was no, there thinking, "Yeah, you got where distracted." Shows get these old ass NBA stories. <laughs> 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 no, <laughs> he was still thinking about that dick being slapped out of his No, okay, I'm gonna tell the story very quickly one more okay. time. Will so Kareem and Will are on the elevator. Kareem and Will are in the elevator. Yes. Okay. Um, a guy walks into the elevator. Third person's in the elevator. The guy looks up at Will Chamberlain, who's an absolute god, superstar, mm -hmm. and goes, oh, my God, Will Chamberlain. He goes, uh, hey, how's the weather up there? Which is like oh. a hacky joke that you say to tall people. He spit on him. It's and rain. he spits on him. And he goes, it's raining. Oh, yeah, I've heard that joke from tall people before. Probably hitting the 50s, though. What? 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 This joke probably hitting the 50s, Bro, man. This is what it's like doing. This is what it's like doing. This is what it's like doing. If you don't make your point within 1.25 seconds, his brain is a fucking parakeet. It's the his, pod. He's a, he's a fish. It's just it's like, the oh, pod. the food over here. What's going on? Oh, my phone, somebody. I thrive in quick hitch, man. Oh, I know. I know. <laughs> I know. Let's just go fast. Bung, 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 bung. Until somebody says something so fucked up that we got to edit. We got to slow it down. Edit, slow it down. Is LeBron anyway. retiring, though? Fuck no. He's just using that as leverage. It is amazing to me. He likes the drama. He, he likes to play the game. He, he, he got to change the narrative. You know if what I'm you saying? don't get this guy on the team, change oh, the narrative. So, the narrative. so <laughs> instead of y'all talking about the Nuggets sweeping me, you know what I'm saying? Y'all was sitting around talking about me retiring. It's almost like uh, it's point. almost like you know what? I'm gonna leave if y'all if y'all make fun of me. That's actually <laughs> fuck. That's brilliant. I'm gonna leave if y'all make fun. Kill of me. Kill a story man. with a story. Yeah. Kill a story with a story. That's fucking brilliant, dude. Because the slander started to, like I, I I noticed last night. Well, yeah, you can play it. Go ahead, Taylor. Bro, hold on before you play it. Killing a story with a story is. Is is the only way you can do it, and he did it fucking masterfully. That's like what Fox News did. Remember when they had an eight hundred million dollar lawsuit to Dominion, right. and then they fired Tucker, and then nobody has talked about that Dominion lawsuit since. I mean, because nobody kill really a cares. Story. Well, they yeah, would have fucking cared. Yeah. You know who else would have cared? CNN, but they couldn't talk shit about it because they also fired Lemon. Mm. It was the perfect kill a story with a story. That right there was genius. And this is great what he's doing. We're all talking about if he's going to get Kyrie. We're all talking about if he's even going to come back. Is he going to play with Bronny? Just CNN killed the story with a story. Well, they both had perfect timing with that. Yeah, they but did Lemon. And then like next week, Trump, baby, town hall. <laughs> You know what I'm so saying? now nobody talking about lemon. That's the game. You kill the story. And, the it's, story. and, and, it's, and it's, you're pulling audience, right? Because you're like you're you're basically saying, look, I know what y'all thought about CNN in the past. We're different. We're different now. Yeah. Here goes Trump. See, I told you we want to play nice with you Republicans. Yeah. You know. So play the play the clip, Taylor. You know, it's all about availability for me and um, keeping my mind sharp and things of that nature. Um, being president on the floor, being president. You know, locker room and 
bus rides and plane rides, things of that nature. Um, it's challenging. It's challenging, you know, for sure. It was a very challenging season, um, you know, for me, um, you know, for our, for our ball club. And obviously, you know, we know what went on early on and whatever the case may be. But um, it, was a, it was a pretty cool, pretty cool ride. Um, but I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. You know. I think it was okay. I don't. I don't like to say it's a successful year because I don't play for anything besides winning championships at this point in my career. And you um, know, I don't. I don't. I don't get a kick out of making a conference appearance. I've done it a lot, and, <laughs> and it's not fun to me to not be able to be able to be a part of. Uh, you know, get to the finals, but um, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see what happens going forward. Um, but I don't know, I don't know. I got a lot to think about, to be honest. I got a lot to think about, to be honest. And um, just for me personally, going going forward with the game of basketball, I got a lot to think about. You know what's interesting about this? If there's this narrative now from players uh, where they're like, yo, if they feel like they didn't win a championship, like the season was a bust or whatever. And like even in this, he says, you know, I'm not I'm not I don't feel good about just going to the Western Conference finals. So if that's the case, we we can't if we're using their logic, we shouldn't talk about the whole totality of their careers anymore. We should only talk about finals appearances, right? If the Western Conference Finals don't matter and all that other stuff don't matter, Eastern Conference Finals, we should only talk about finals appearances and when they won championships. And if you use that metric, you know, mm-hmm. LeBron he drops his, he really drops himself in the rankings. Mm. If yeah. you're just using that metric. I think, I, yeah, I mean, to, to defend him, I think what he's saying is at this point in my career, he's like, earlier in my career, I'd be happy to even make the playoffs because I hadn't done that. But now... He's saying at the end of his career, the twilight of his career, he wants to be in the finals. But he's 20 years in. He hasn't been in the finals. When's the last time he went to the finals? The bubble? Was that three years ago? Four years ago? Mm. <laughs> he didn't even make the playoffs like one year with the Lakers. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like I said, that's a, it's a weird metric. I think LeBron does get a lot of unnecessary slander. But, you know, as I say, as I, as I, as I said this morning um, on Breakfast Club, um, with that type of greatness comes that type of slander, baby. You can't have it both ways. My that's, therapist tells me that all the time. 100%. With that kind of success. That's the price of success. That's the price of success. That is literally it. If you don't have uh, great success, you won't have a whole lot of criticism. That but with is great the price success of success. comes great criticism. So everybody yes. acts like LeBron gets this overwhelming amount of slander. No, he gets the amount of slander that somebody as great as LeBron James should get. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah 100%. Like, you're the guy. You've been the guy for 20 years, four championships, however many, I think with four MVPs to go with it. Like, you've been the chosen one since you were 17, 18 years old. And I'm, I know LeBron knows this, whether or not it feels good or not. He knows that slander comes with the position 100%. that he's in. And honestly, I don't even think him getting swept in the Western Conference Finals hurts or helps his legacy. No. I think LeBron's home already. No, I think beating Steph helps. If he lost to Steph, I think that people would start to use that as an opportunity to chip away. I don't think beating Steph in the second round of the playoffs does anything for LeBron James' legacy. Beating him doesn't do anything. Losing to him did, would. You think so? Yeah. Well, he's already lost to him three times in the NBA Finals. Nobody <laughs> thinks Steph is better than LeBron. I do. Right. Nobody thinks Steph is better than LeBron. I think he's the second greatest basketball player of all time. Who? Steph Curry. I've said that a million times. I think Steph Curry is the second best basketball player I've ever seen. Michael Jordan, Steph Curry, Kobe Bryant, LeBron James, Magic Johnson. Five best players I've ever witnessed on a basketball court. Mm. Oh, God. Five best players I've ever seen. There's, listen. And I'm going to use one of Stephen A. Smith's arguments. <laughs> I don't even believe you. Stephen A. Smith said, Stephen A. Smith said, <laughs> Will's, uh, he said he can't put Will Chamberlain over Bill Russell. 
He said even though he feels like Wilt was better than Bill, mm. he can't put Wilt over Bill because Bill beat him so much in the finals. So I asked, said to Stephen A. Burbetton, well, shouldn't that same logic apply to Steph? Same exact logic. You could, Steph beat LeBron James three times in NBA finals, guys. Mm -hmm. I thought that's what we measure uh, greatness by. If you're the best, you should beat me. Multiple times. You should own me. And that's going to all that's the only narrative that's gonna always be. Draymond hurt LeBron. Green also beat LeBron James in the finals. Is is Come Draymond on, Green better than LeBron James? We don't James? do that with nobody else. We don't compare a role. But if that's the case, Kyrie Irving is is Kyrie better than LeBron? Because Kyrie Kyrie averaged 30 plus points in that comeback series against Golden State, those last three games. No, no, I guess what I'm trying to say is that. You can't just use that scenario to say that someone is better than someone else. So what's the scenario? Just b ball, just basketball. Yeah, just their skills of basketball. Okay. And their ability to win. And they have an equal ability to win, oh, right? Oh, 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 oh. Go, go, go. The ability to win. I beat you three times. But how many rings do they both have? Four. But I beat you head up three times. So why weren't you even there in the situation for me to beat you? I beat you three times. You, but Why if, weren't you good enough for me to beat you in the finals? There's me. many years where Steph and his cohorts were not good enough for LeBron to beat him in the finals. Where the fuck were you? What are you talking about? Did, did LeBron only beat Steph in the finals to win his four rings? No, he, did LeBron only beat Steph? No, he beat, who he beat? He beat Steph, the Spurs, and the Mavericks, uh, not the Mavericks, who he beat? I think they got one back on the Mavs, right? Oh, the Heat. LeBron got his four rings. With, he got his, he beat the Heat with the Lakers, and then Spurs with the Heat once. Yeah, and somebody else. The Heat. And, my my point is yeah. that there are years where Steph's team wasn't even good enough to play against LeBron in LeBron's the finals. LeBron's played twenty years. Steph played fourteen. But now you're making different arguments. Well, I guess what I'm saying is once the Golden State Warriors, they, yeah, I think they built that team through the only draft. You're punishing LeBron for his losses against Steph in the finals. You're not punishing Steph for not even being able to bring his team to the finals. That makes zero sense, and I'll tell you why. Mm -hmm. They're playing, the Western Conference was so tough, and we're acting like they didn't build the Golden State Warriors through the draft over some years. Right. But once they built, once that nucleus of Draymond, Clay, and Steph figured it out, they've been there. It's been to the finals like six times over the last, what, eight years? So it's finals appearances? Yes. Well, then LeBron wins, by your argument. <laughs> Oh. He's had more finals appearances. The Eastern Conference sucked. But forget all the finals appearances. When we played head up, I beat you three times. This is, I don't understand how this is a debate. Like, I beat you three times in the finals. I will always be able to have that over you. Yeah, because you're the better team. What? So what, man? What does it matter? I mean, was Isaiah Thomas better than Michael Jordan? There's times. Was Michael, Isaiah Thomas better than Michael Jordan because of how many times the Detroit Pistons beat the Bulls? Once the Bulls figured it out, Pistons couldn't fucking do nothing with it. Or once the Pistons got old. Once, the, once they <laughs> lost Rodman. And, like, there's a lot of okay, other arguments and, to go and, into. And, and there's times the Bulls weren't the best team in the finals. I think people forget that. I think we, 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 we look back at history and we Which say, time? this Phoenix Suns team? When Charles Barkley won the MVP that year with Kevin Johnson, Dan Marley, Danny Ainge, Richard Dumas, Cedric Sabalos, that team won like 64 games that year. What do you mean? Nobody was worried about the Phoenix Suns. Yo, 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 you're <laughs> nah, crazy. Yo, come that on, year, Seth, don't do I, that. I used to play with them in NBA Jam. Nobody was phenomenal. worried about it. Yeah. Richard Dumas had like the best year of his career, averaging 21 points a game, and nobody was like, who the fuck is Richard Dumas? Yeah. I thought the Phoenix Suns was going to beat the Chicago Bulls. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's fun to think that because we all want the underdog to win, but it's never going to fucking happen in any Four world. 2 Barkley won, the, Barkley won the MVP that year. They were smoking. Carl Malone won MVPs during Jordan's reign. It was stupid, but he won it. That was fatigue but, but by from way, voting for the same person. That Utah Jazz team was a great team. <laughs> Say again? That Utah Jazz team was a phenomenal team. Like, phenomenal. Like, you got, John, number one, you got John Stockton, the all-time assist leader. And you got Carl Malone, the third, uh, leading most, uh, sco has scored the third most points in the NBA history. That was a phenomenal team. Like, I was just arguing with somebody about this the other day. I'm like, why do we act like Michael Jordan didn't play all-world elite teams? The Lakers. I'm not saying he didn't. The Trailblazers. The, yeah, the Clyde Portland Drexler team was really Terry good. What? Yeah. With Clyde Drexler, Terry Porter, and all of them? That shit was phenomenal. Yeah, but Even the, the Sonics team won 60-plus games that year with Gary Payton and Sean Kemp. Sure, but they weren't the—the uh, Bulls weren't the underdogs. 
I don't know what they were against the Suns. I don't, I'm not sure about that year. I can't fathom. I don't know. I, don't, I really don't know. All I'm simply saying is Michael beat all of those guys, and those were elite teams. And those, yeah, they, I'm not saying he didn't beat And some of those teams might, other than Michael Jordan, might have been had better role players. And he still beat them. You know, with no excuses, 6 and 0 NBA finals. So you're saying that LeBron can only say he's better than Steph if he beat him all those times in the finals. I'm not saying that. I think with the, with the eyeball test, yes, LeBron James is probably a, a a more all-around player than Steph Curry. I just feel like for what I like in a basketball player, Steph Curry has those killer traits like a Kobe Bryant, a Michael Jordan, like this will to win. That is just phenomenal. And he mm. proved it. He, he won a championship without KD. KD comes, he wins two. He comes back and wins another one. That says a lot about a person to me. And he hasn't moved. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He stayed there at Golden State that whole time. Yeah, but that's easier. Is it? It's way harder to move to a different city, build a new team, have a new coach, new organization, new everything that is to stay within the same organization and build. And then So why didn't LeBron take the easy way and stay in Cleveland? Well, I think the easy way would have been to stay in Miami, not Cleveland. He went to the finals mad times in Cleveland. It seems like you're not giving Golden State any credit for the luck that they've experienced. Why is it luck? So what, so what is it for LeBron then? I mean, it's lucky that they drafted two guys that ended up working out. I mean, like Steph's whole career could be nothing, right? Like the guy was rolling his ankles every time he ran up the floor. He got with a good doctor. Got with a good physical, whatever the fuck that is, and then rebuilt the lower parts of his body to have more strength, et cetera. Like LeBron James spends a million dollars a year on his body. What are we talking about? Like all of these guys do that. Like you should get the best coaches and I'm the best saying, trainers I, and doctors. I, I'm just saying that it seems like you're not giving them credit for any luck. I don't know if I believe in luck in basketball. I believe it's a skill set and you build a system. Like these are like if somebody shows me on paper LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Steph Curry, let's just say they're all on the same team. Yeah. You know you got something there. So what is, your do, what is your argument? That just Steph is better than LeBron? That's the argument? I just got Steph as my number two greatest player of all time. Okay, that's fine. I don't, I just not, I didn't, it's you nothing to it. it. And, no, I th and, and, and I think in the, and, and when it's all said and done, when they, when they sitting around old, yeah. talking shit to each other, yeah. <laughs> Steph is always going to be able to say, I beat you three times in the finals, bro. Yeah, I mean, like, you, we listen, played in the finals four times, I beat you three. By your argument, Eli Manning is a better quarterback than Tom Brady. You are right. Only difference is one fundamental difference with that. Yeah. I went there nine times, Eli. Yeah, you bust my ass twice, but I went nine and won seven. LeBron went to the finals how many times? Ten and got as many as Steph. But still, <laughs> no, he, he went there he ten. Went, he went ten and got as many rings as Steph. But by your argument, when they played head-to-head, -head, I agree with you. Eli Manning is a better quarterback than Tom Brady. By your argument. Okay. So you that so Eli for, Manning for, for, for the, so quarterbacks in the NFL according to you go Eli Manning then Tom no, Brady no 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 you said by my logic for a game for two games and when it counted Eli busted his ass Eli can always talk that shit but by the way Eli's the only person who really can maybe the guy in Philly but not like Eli can but the, your but according to your logic number one mm -hmm. is Eli Manning no because that don't make any sense because Tom Brady got seven rings. Steph so, and LeBron, so LeBron have the LeBron same amount of rings. rings. Yes, if LeBron went to the finals 10 times and lost three to Steph, but he still had seven rings, yeah. But he lost three times to Steph. He'd been to the finals 10 times and got the same amount of rings as Steph, and I beat you three? Come on, man. I can talk some shit if I'm Steph Curry. I'm not saying you can't talk, talk I can talk shit, some big shit. But there's no way that, that he's better. I just got him number two. That's you, fine. You think Kobe's better? Then LeBron? Yeah. Because that's the one that really I, I don't understand how people gloss over. I can understand the Steph debate all day long. I just do that to argue. But the Kobe Bryant, it's hard for me to say LeBron's better than Kobe Bryant. I don't see it. That's a tricky that's one. That's hard, yeah. That's really But nobody hard. even mentions Kobe. Kobe don't even get mentioned. He don't even get mentioned. LeBron never had a player alongside him as dominant as Shaq was. Man, Shaq left and Kobe won two more. Stop doing that to Kobe. Paul Gasol might be better than anyone LeBron's had beside him. That's a good point, too. Get the fuck out of guys. Who's better than LeBron's player? Kyrie Irving? Kyrie, maybe. <laughs> that's, that's, about? That's, a that's a question. Anthony Davis? I'll take Paul Gasol over Anthony Davis. No. If I mean, okay, 
A healthy Anthony a Davis? A healthy Anthony Davis. I'm taking a healthy Anthony yeah, Davis all day long. There is no such thing. Jesus Christ. But they don't right. know that. They didn't know that going into it. Okay. Anyway, let's So you move don't think on. LeBron's retiring. All right. Um, damn. How the fuck we always start off like the goddamn All the Smoke podcast? <laughs> hey, what the fuck is going on, man? All right. Also, can I put a button on this LeBron thing real quick, though? <laughs> because people think I hate LeBron. I do not hate LeBron. The only thing I say about LeBron is he's not the greatest NBA player of all time. That's Michael Jordan. We can debate two on down after that. That's it. LeBron, I got LeBron in my top five. I think the slander that he gets is justified only because of how great he is. Is you know when slander is not justified when you just shitting on a person that is not even remotely on the level that the slander warrants. You know what I'm saying? For LeBron James to be who he is, I expect him to get the type of slander he gets. I expect him to get all the memes. I expect everybody to talk shit to him. I expect people to call him washed up. I expect people to say it's over for him. Even though for 20 years, all he's done is be consistently great. Hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He's been consistently great for 20 years. Those are the kind of careers I like, people. I like longevity and consistency. Mm. Those little flash in the pan shit that come and go, not, that, for not for me. I like playing forever, and LeBron has been literally playing forever. It's too, too long, actually. He might need to retire. Um, Kanzori, fellas, have you ever wished you were a little bit taller? I can't relate. Yeah. I wish okay. I was a baller, bro. Maybe you matched on I Tinder. I wish I had a girl. She looked good. I would call her. Skilo. I wish What's I had happening? a rabbit in a hat. With a bat and a six foot father. By the way, Kanzuri, I am shocked y'all have not commissioned Skilo to do something yet. I mean. But maybe you matched on Tinder, but her profile says must be over six feet. Maybe. Your date wants to wear heels, but she can't because it will make her taller than you. Well, I got the short kings covered with today's sponsor, Kanzuri. Kanzuri makes shoes that make you up to 2.8 inches taller Ooh. without anyone knowing. All right, well, look, girls got heels, they got makeup, they got push-up bras. Why can't men get a boost in confidence, too? We're all the same height lying down anyway, if you know what I mean. Hey. For a limited time only, our listeners get an extra 15% off your order with the code idiots at Kanzori.com. The site is already 30% off, and with our code, you get an extra 15%. That's 45% off your entire order. Support our show and check them out at C-O-N-Z-U-R-I.com and use the code idiots. You get compliments on your Kanzuris, even if they didn't make you taller. The height insoles are actually built into the shoe so no one can tell you're getting a secret height boost. The brand is also hidden on the shoes and on the packaging. It's really the ultimate height hack. Life's short but you don't have to be. Hey. It's time to level up the playing field, boys. Maybe update that dating profile to six feet. Kanzori is an absolute game changer when it comes to your dating life. Get an extra 15% off at Kanzori with the code idiots at www.kanzori.com slash idiots. That's a total of 45% off your order. Hashtag Kanzori Pod. Okay, use code idiots at Kanzori.com. Go to C O N Z U R I.com with code idiots. When I want to get height, <laughs> when I want to get high, I put on a pair of Kanzori's. I do feel, I like this though. I think a lot of y'all women are missing y'all blessing, man. Your blessing is five, six, and you don't even know it. What hmm. do you mean? A lot of these tall women, man, they out here overlooking the short kings for no reason. You yeah. know what I mean? And I can't stand short women who have the nerve to ask for want a tall dudes. man. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah. What if I'm six, seven? I'm looking at your short ass. Why would I breathe with you? Yeah. What if I want NBA players? What if I want little LeBrons? Yeah. I'm going to get them with you. And you five, three. So do you think that there should be some segregation with height when it comes to dating? Um, That's a good question. I just think women, especially tall women, should stop being so picky about height. Because I think that short man could be their blessing. And I think short women should just shut the fuck up. Yo, do you, don't you think it looks a little weird, though, when a girl's way taller than the dude? No. I look at I that man. At that I look shit. at that man. I'm not going to lie. That king. That's fucked up. But I it's salute like, that guy. I be like, he got a big dick. Yeah. He's funny. Yeah. He's intelligent. Dick. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Probably from Monk's Corner. You yeah. know what I mean? <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I think when I see that image. <laughs> okay. Wait, your girl's not taller than you. I know, I was just talking. Oh, so was that like a like getting a tall girl? Was that um, a prize? No, it was I never back in even, the day. I never even thought about it until I'm like, damn, you are like six one. Oh wow, in heels. 
You know, there you are, 5'11 with no shoes on. I never even thought about it. Ah, Would you ever, like, put their sneakers on by accident? Would there any be, like, a situation like that? And then he'd have room. Nah. I mean, those, those, were, those, were, those were tall women who used to wear heels a lot. Oh. Here come a man. short woman. Short Listen, women. I don't want a 6'7 guy. That's not oh. me. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just, oh, I so thank God. <laughs> so reasonable. Six, seven. It's not, exactly. It sounds crazy. That's what, that's what he just said. That's what, what height? I'm what height? Uh, mine's is 5'10 to 6'2. Are oh. you willing to date somebody your, your height? Uh, no. That's fucked up. But you know, but Five listen, isn't but that bad. it's not Five exactly. Ten, I'm sure. cool with that, but that's only, short hate, yo. But listen, Self but short listen, hate. you have to understand, especially for tall women, they want someone to feel they want to feel secure. They are secure. They six four walking around. <laughs> they want the man to feel. They want to feel protected furniture. with the man. And no, this is no. This is nothing against yo, short men. Most NFL it's running backs are like five seven. They wouldn't feel protected around Mike Tyson. Mm. How tall is Mike Tyson? 5'10". They say 5'10". Well, I'm cool. Meet him in person. He's shorter. Yeah. Meet he him is? in person. They say 5'10". Sure, but that's love to different. Bring you're talking down. about a skill. You. You're he's talking about a skill. Sharla, <laughs> nothing against you. You're short. Are you fighting? <laughs> <laughs> First of all. No, I'm asking. No, bro, bro. I'm just asking a question. My height don't fight. But you're not. That's what I'm saying. My height don't no. fight. <laughs> My height don't fight. <laughs> But that's, but that's what but you look, make it her point. I beat up plenty six foot tall people. Okay, talk your shit. <laughs> oh, talk your shit. Okay, talk shit. your shit. Okay. Yo, talk your shit, gang. In my life, I've won a lot of fights. I'm usually shorter than everybody. Like, well, again, you're just trying to say Mike. that shit hurt him, yo. <laughs> I just want to <laughs> let you know what you said to him. <laughs> hurt him, yo. I'm just saying. Did you hear what he just said? I'm this just saying, but you're trying to compare Mike you know, Tyson. Yo, 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 you're you Uncle Tom of short people, yo. <laughs> I'm not joking. You're Uncle Tom of short people. You're a you 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 straight set of short yo. people, yo. Why? Just because you five Because listen, I do not want Discriminating against other short individuals. Thank you for lifting my height because I'm actually five. Five one? Five one? <laughs> listen, How you gonna be five one? That's the thing. Though. Short but listen, but listen, uh, shows, that's shows, crazy. Shows, 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 shows coming from, no, 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 listen, Taylor, coming from a tall person. Taylor, tall, you should get a check. Wait, let me ask you a question. Coming from Why a tall person, yeah. and yeah. you see me and a guy my height, you're like, oh, they're cute. Like you're not gonna think of it as no threat or nothing like that. Why would I want y'all to be a threat? If I, I don't want, it's not Taylor, about Taylor, what Taylor, Taylor. Right. Look at who if, look, That's how you know she's from Philly. But couples gotta look like threats. Yeah, yeah. Right. They don't look like a threat. They not in love. You gotta. I, you, they, I need two dogs. I'm I need just them. saying. No, what? if I see like you and another guy maybe around your height. Yeah. Together. I'll probably ask you if your parents are around. Like, I'll be like, are you guys lost? Did, did... But, 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 <laughs> I laughed so fucking hard. This is like 12 years ago. This was so long ago, yo. We just walking around Times Square trying to figure life out. And that dude's like, hey man, you know what Toys R Us said? You know what the kids store at, man? Bro. But also, yo! Look, <laughs> short guys, especially in New York, they have anger issues too. So that's what? also. How tall are you, Alex? 5'10. You are wild. You just fucking came in here short shaming, then just straight up told us that all show people got anger issues. Yeah, like, what like, the where you got this from? They New do. Yorkers, I get, New Yorkers have anger issues. You gonna they let, do. You gonna let Al get sure. away with 5'10 right so, now? 5'10. 5'10. 5'10. And sneakers. He already has colored nails. He has colored nails. What are they called? Kazonis? Kazonis. Kazonis. Kazonis is some Kazonis. Sketch up a show people got anger issues in New York. Everybody has anger issues in New York. I would say in New York then. The hot record in New York general. right now is I'm from New York. What the fuck I look like telling a nigga good morning? <laughs> you think you got some fucking manners, man. That's a, that's a hit right there. That's a hit right I'm there. Not, that's just hard. I mean, it's a good record. I don't know if it's a hit. That's just hard. It's a good record. Anyway, she need. I mean, she got to follow up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's a it's a it's a buzz record. It's a record that gets you a buzz. Mm -hmm. Who's this? Scar uh, Scar Lips. Scar Lips. Scar Lips. Yeah, it's a record that gets you a buzz. I don't. You know. 
It's, 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 you got to follow up with something. Yo, when you shorts were fighting like that, bro, that was crazy. Dude. You shorts. <laughs> yo, like, yo, yo, why would you add crazy. an S to everything? It sounds racist. It does, it does, right? Everything you add an S to it, it sounds like bigotry, no matter what it is. Ooh, I hit you it. You talls. Yeah, talls, bro. <laughs> you we, fats. Us talls, we're not really worried about shit. Yo, you, know you know fats I mean? always coming at Whole Foods for no reason. Yeah, you fats. Like, you know what I'm saying? Fucking fats. <laughs> You could buy the whole food here. <laughs> I'm here for the whole food. <laughs> Yo, shout out to Fats, bro. Yo, Sluth all up for real. We don't. We Should got- Fats only be able to date each other? No, that's different. No, it's not different. It is different. Why is How is it different? different? You're talking about body type versus a height. Height is body type. Yeah, but you're talking. We're talking about a type like thick versus skinny. Then tall versus short. Yeah, but a height that matters more. Cause to me, I don't care if a guy is five eleven or whatever, but he a little thick him, I'm cool with that. Taylor, there's a six two, four hundred and twenty pound person out there right now who's saying I would rather be five six and hundred and sixty pounds. No, he's not. Yes, absolutely <laughs> goddamn. Like, this person like, probably de- this no, person probably de- this that. person probably dealing with all type of health issues. I'm sure he's not saying yeah. he's you know what I'm saying. Five, and I think the doctor probably telling skinny. him to lose weight, and it's probably tough for him. And he's like, I would much rather be five six one sixty. I'm sure he's not he would trade the that fat for that I'm height. Sure he's not saying the height thing. I'm sure he's not saying the height thing. Taking shots at Ross this week. Damn, damn, that's crazy, bro. I don't even know what that means, but. Literally. Shouts, listen, shouts to Ross. Shouts to Rick Ross. Salute to Ross and salute to Envy, Yo, man. Yo, salute to Envy, bro. Yeah. Can we can we have a piece? I don't like these guys beefing, man. I don't like it either, especially when it starts getting about everything except for the car shows. You know what I'm saying? If you keep it at the car shows and you make jokes about each other's car shows, whose car show is flyer, whose car show gets the most people, all that's great. But it's getting too serious I, now? Everything else has been too much. Hey, listen, man, you can never tell nobody how to react. I say that all the time. You cannot tell people how to react. That's why sometimes you got to leave people alone because you might push a person. That person might pull out a gun and shoot you. Whoa. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and in our mind, we're like, yo, that's an overreaction. And it probably is. But who are we to tell that human they overreacted? Yeah. You know, leave people the fuck alone. So my first question when I saw you, I was like, is that shit real? Because I thought it was just. Yeah, I thought everybody was I thought it was just around. Pro- and you know what Uncle Charles is about to say? What's Uncle Charlotte about to say? That's the problem with y'all fucking generation. Do you think everything's a joke? You think everything's a joke. Nobody wow. knows when something is real anymore. Like, wow. Like, you know what I mean? And we do wow. this all the time. But it's all it's only because also social media is the biggest playground ever. Yeah. So if you see somebody make a joke, social media can egg shit on so much mm. that that person who got joked on. May not even feel like it's a joke anymore. They may feel like because they feel embarrassed. Yeah, they've been all, publicly that's humiliated. Right, that's right. Yeah. That's but right. you don't right. think egging it on by the Breakfast Club making clips of these beefs going back and forth eggs it on? That's why I thought it was a joke. The fact that you guys are promoting it. Well, I didn't. I, I didn't post it. I posted. <laughs> I, I posted last Friday because I thought Friday was pretty inbound. Yeah. But you know, when you start mentioning families and kids and that all of that, crazy, you know bro. what I mean? Like that, it gets damn Rick Ross trending. It gets crazy. That's that's when it's that's when it's all a bit too much. You know what I'm saying? Even when you're talking about health issues, you know what I mean? You talk about health issues, it's like, uh. But once again, you can't tell nobody how to react. So then, how do we get them to reconcile? What can we do? I mean, I want Envy and Ross just to have a conversation. You know what I mean? Because listen, they, they, first of all, let's not act like all of us aren't. Cool. Like, I've yeah. known Ross for damn near 20 years. I've known Gunplay for damn near 20 years. Envy probably known them for just as long. Like, yeah. you know, there's, there's, like, when Ross was going through his whole thing with 50 back in the day, and, like, a lot of New, New York DJs stopped playing Ross shit, Envy didn't. Oh, wow. Envy was still showing Ross love, you know what yeah. I mean? So it's just like, like, they know, like, they know each other. That's why it's, like, it's, it's, it's strange when things get to... This level, it's more like, personal. Yeah, and could, b- b- pick up the phone. Yeah, yeah. You know I mean, have a phone call, have a have a conversation. Let's get everything back in bounds. So why you know don't we get why don't we get Ross on the Breakfast Club, man? I mean, if he if Ross wants to, Ross always got to open invitation to the Breakfast Club. Yeah, if he maybe we to. can get them to reconcile. But I would rather them talk first, though. Joint car show. I wouldn't want. Mm. I, I, that's what I thought about. I said that on the air a, a million times. But by the way, let's be clear. Both of their car shows are super successful. I'll, I'll pull my car up. 
It, it, Envy takes all kind of cars. Envy does four shows a year. He takes any type of car. Nobody got a car as nice as mine. No. What you got? Come on, son. What you got? <laughs> what you got? Come on, son. <laughs> and Ross does his car show every year, once a year in, a, in, a, in Atlanta. You know what I mean? So it's like their car shows are both successful, super successful. I just, I, as long, if they were just talking about cars, everything would be cool. When you start talking about all that, uh, everything else. Family and health is where family, shit gets health, a little tricky. all that shit, leave, leave, you know, it's like, okay, all right, all right, all right, time out. <laughs> Jimmy Butler, get on the knee, yeah. time out, everybody relax, yeah. stop. Because then it becomes something else. And it's not even just about Ross and Envy. Now it's about defending your loved ones. Defending your loved ones. People that with Ross, people that with Envy, you know what yeah. I mean? And it gets stupid. It's just like, all right, everybody cool out. And by the way, I've seen terrible outcomes come from lesser situations. It's Ooh. always these lesser situations like this that snowball into the bigger into thing. some other dumb shit. And then everybody's sitting around saying, because of a car show? Yeah. Because of a fucking car show? What's a car show? Yeah. <laughs> I've been trying to think I about really, like, what this is. No, I thought the same shit. But like, it's a showcase of cars. So That's you got to pay five hundred dollars to go watch, look at cars. I don't think they five hundred dollars. Wasn't hold. that the big argument from Envy? He was like, "Your tickets are too expensive." But like, I, I don't understand. So I, it's not my cars. I don't own the cars, but I pay five hundred dollars so I can like look at them closely. Look at them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you then, do them? you meet the people that the cars are owned by? Nah, I don't think the artists are there. I think it's like I, I haven't been to one. I don't think I've, I might have been to a car show hosting one before, but I'm pretty sure, at least at Envy's, he sections them off. So it'll be like little Baby's section of cars or 50 Cent's car, like stuff like that. I mean, I'm not a car guy. There's plenty of car enthusiasts out there that like that type of shit. That's oh, why so you're going to get, you're going to see famous people's cars. Yeah, or just cars in general, not just famous right. people, but cars in general. Right. But I'm not a car enthusiast. So, I, you know, stuff like car shows don't, Intrigue me, mm. but there's a million car enthusiasts out here, man. Yeah. I just want to see everybody. I just want to see cooler heads prevail. I'm not mad at, you know, how anybody reacted. I just want it to stop now. Let's, everybody's going a little too, a little too hard, too far. What's your dream car? I'm not. A, I'm really not a car person. Really? And you know what? I'm glad. It's so funny you said that to me because I say this to myself all the time, and I tell my wife this. It's easy to say. I'm not a car person when you can't afford probably the car you want. But you can and you still don't want it. When you can afford any car you wanted to yeah. and don't want it, you're really not a car person. I'm not into that type of shit. I'm not into a lot of... I'm not into... I'm, I'm, I thank God I don't have vices for depreciating assets. Ooh. <laughs> I do not have vices for yeah. depreciating assets. I don't give a fuck about your designer clothes. Mm. I don't care about your cars. I like a nice watch. You know what I'm saying? I, get, I like a nice watch. But other than that, I don't have those type of vices. Yeah. I like experiences. Bro, experiences over things, man. Man. That is man. the ethos. Man. The I, life I, ethos. I, 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 there's, there's not too many experiences I've forgotten about. Like, I'm talking about, like, when we take lavish vacations. Or even just experiences when it's just like, yo, we might be kicking it at the house or something. Think you know about, what I mean? Think about what people will say at your funeral. Where they'd be like, whoa, he had this car. No. And this no. pair of sneakers. That's right. And this, whatever. That's right. No, they're going to talk about the experiences That's right. you guys have shared. That's right. Those are the things that are, uh, you cannot put a numerical value on. It's better to actually have than to look like you have. And all of these fucking idiots out here who compare, who, who, who try to gauge what somebody has based off what they wear, that's how you know they don't have much. Mm. Of course. <laughs> That's how you know they I don't mean, have much. It's the same thing you see like uh, people coming out of Russia or people coming out of China, right? They love the name brand on the clothing. Like Louis Vuitton and like some of these other big designers, Gucci, will make specific products for China and Russia that have the logo huge because they're coming from places of communism where everybody was on the same level. Oh, So you want, when you have money, to prove to everybody Nah, we're not one of those. I'm richer. I'm better. I got yeah. it. Whereas old money places like in America, the old money people, they wear like raggedy shit because their money isn't popping to them. Everybody got money where they're from. Who gives a if you if you own 500 acres of land or you own 500 You're not trying properties? You're to flex with your Gucci <laughs> shirt. <laughs> You know what I mean? Like, like, now I will say this: you are dressing like Paul Newman, dude. That Regular. Is, that is America. But I will tell you this: you go to some place like Cannes, you're gonna see it. 
Well, yeah, because you got the broke motherfuckers there. Like, can, no, that's I'm talking about like Monica Cans and like Monica uh, Mara, what's that? Monaco, Monaco, Monaco. Oh my god, that's that's so like so couple things like in old money Monaco no but Monaco is basically like a way for all the Europeans to save their money in taxes so mm -hmm. if you make a lot of money in Europe you move to Monaco so you don't have to spend that like crazy socialist tax rate but uh, in Cannes Cannes is all like the Russians Cannes is you get a lot of like these like big money Ukrainians and uh, they come in there they come from a place of poverty so they they want to prove to all the people around them they're not poor like yeah. everyone else so they want to show the logo they show it you go to if you go to Cannes you go to Monaco you're going to see every car you can imagine Imagine every fly ass Louis Gucci Prada, all of that shit. That's what everybody does when they first get money. The first generation with wealth needs to prove that they're not poor like everyone else in their family. You see it in America, we do it all the time. Like you see it with a rapper that grows up with nothing immediately. He's like, I need to show you my chain, I need to show you my cars, I need to show you all the fucking things. The people that come from generational wealth are trying to hide the fact that they have money because they understand the problems that money brings. You know, fucking Warren Buffett's been wearing the same outfit for the last 75 years. Bill Gates, same outfit the last Word 75 up. years. They're like, I don't want you guys to come rob me. Word Leave up. me alone. Word up. So it's I, to your point. When you actually have it, you don't need to flaunt it. When you don't have it, you want to lie to people and act like you do. And when you haven't had it, when you, I've been fired four times mm. and had to go collect unemployment checks. Mm. You know what I'm saying? That shit don't feel good. Yeah. So when you get money. And your Gucci flip flops. <laughs> there's nothing worse than. <laughs> I had Gucci flip flops? No, I'm saying like, oh. Your friend, like you got money going to the unemployment <laughs> oh, yeah, line. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's so like, so me, I like to get money and just. Say, what's the rush to spend it? No rush. And bro. what are you spending it on? No rush. Bro. You know what I mean? I like making investments. I like buying property. You know I, what I'm saying? I wish I knew more about that kind of stuff, to be honest. But like for me, it's all just about freedom. It's like, what does this money allow me to do? Yeah, you just get the, I mean, you just gotta get the right financial team. Like I even with that shit with you know, with uh with Ross, like renting out your house. Mm -hmm. Ross might have made a million dollars doing that. Yeah, I don't know how long the production was. Great, great move, great move. You can make so much money, especially if you're not even in your home. Like it's it's fantastic. I rented out a property that I own in Monk's Corner um, to 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 Righteous Gemstones, mm -hmm. right? The show on HBO, and it was it's 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 cool money for a day. You know what I mean? I think they only rented it for like a day or two, but it's it's cool money if you just own a property and you're like, oh well, yeah, y'all want to use it for whatever. It's cool money to have. My parents did it back in the day. It's probably changed, but back in the day, they rented it out. They were filming a movie downstairs in our apartment building. And really? They, they needed a, a place where they could do the makeup and all the things. So they asked if they could rent our parents' place. See and what I'm saying? They rented it out for $10,000 for the day. And we didn't even have to be out of it. Like- Oh, we wow. slept in our beds. <laughs> we did. We got, there was no, because they weren't filming in it. Yeah. So that was a $10,000. And this is when I was a kid playing like Little League Baseball. So yeah, it's fantastic money, especially if you're not going to use it. right now, would you guys rent out your actual place you live if you're not there? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it on a but regular. I also, I also don't have a 54,000 square foot house. But, but I actually, <laughs> but no, no, no. Yes. I, 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 I wouldn't do it. Uh, as like an Airbnb, like when I'm away on the weekends or something like that. But if a movie production came in and they were like, hey, can we rent your place out for $10,000 a day for 10 days and we'll put you up in a hotel or something like that? Mm -hmm. Why not? Like, it's just what if, like $100,000 to sleep in a hotel right next door. Like, what, if you what do I have in my place that's so important right now? What if you had a 54,000 square foot house and you was just... It was just a wing of it that they wanted. Even even better. That's what like, I'm saying. <laughs> this is a no brainer, bro. Like, <laughs> what if people are going to be sleeping in your bed? Are you trying to ask if Eddie Murphy really nutted in this? Like, I mean, I'm just saying. This that, guy, man. That's the pushback. Poor that, Eddie, man. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie just caught a strain on this for no reason. If somebody's going to be sleeping in my bed, yeah, that so, kind of changes things. So here's the thing: you could tell the production you need to put bring a new mattress. I don't want you sleeping on my. Why mattress. would they be sleeping in your bed? They're not using. It's not a hotel. My point is. My point is. When it comes to movie production or commercial, there's so much money for them to throw at situations yes, and problems. Yes. They would be totally happy to get a Casper fucking mattress, bring that shit and put That's it in right. there. Have yours kept somewhere else. They would bring a new bed in if you wanted. Mm. Like it's so easy to get these companies that have endless amounts of money to just do whatever they want for the shoot. Because what's rare is the location. What did you say? It was fifty-four thousand square feet on these yes. like crazy grounds. That's the thing they. Can't can't buy. Mm. That's the thing they can't. They're recreate. shooting in Atlanta. They have to replicate a palace. Yeah, 
If that ain't a palace, I don't know what the fuck you call it. it you know is. what I'm saying? Yeah. And, 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 and Envy does that too. Envy, like, he'll, he'll rent his cars out to, you know. As he should. Certain productions. Yeah, video productions. As he should. Yeah, movies, shit like that. Like, 100%. That's the only reason having those assets matters. Like, I even had a homeboy. I had a homeboy back in the day. He's an Italian dude. He had a, uh, like, a blue, it was the blue Lamborghini, Rocky drove and like, I think it was the, the Rocky movie with Antonio Tarver. I think it was that Oh, one. Okay. Or whatever, that blue Lamborghini that he drove, that was my, my guys. Old, old, oh, wow. old OG Italian dude. That's and cool. I, forget, I think that was some tens of thousands of dollars to rent for the movie. It's like, yeah, why so, wouldn't you do it? So the vintage cars, you could definitely do it, and that can offset some of the costs yes, of like man. having them and fixing them. But yeah, for me, I don't know. Money is all about freedom. It's like the freedom to create the way that I want to create and uh, do the projects that I want to do and also explore the world and, and you know have these great times with my friends and family. And, and yeah, and when you have conversations, it's never conversations about money for me. It's conversations about opportunity. Like what can this money allow us to build? Yeah. What can this money allow us to do? Yeah. Like having money just for the sake of having money, like... Now, even I get I, sometimes if I get something crazy, the only person I really show is my mom. You know what I mean? But if I guess the thing is like when you're not buying things to impress other people, nothing you get is crazy because it matches the passion that you have for it. So it's like if you truly love watches, like and you're into that, and that's something that makes you happy. It's not like it's it's unjustified. You work really hard, and you should have a nice thing. I like watches. I do like watches. You know, I I like. I like going on vacation with my wife. Same. I don't have a lot of time that we get to just spend like without anybody and like going somewhere and seeing a fucking sick hotel that like somebody in the way that I love stand up comedy, they spent their whole life on design and they spent their whole life curating the perfect like vacation experience for a guest. Like they've dedicated their life yes. to that. Yes. And like seeing Seeing that to me, it's like really fucking impressive and cool, and and I I love that time. I love like being a judge. Like, who are me and my wife to come to this beautiful, fantastic place? And be like, oh, the food is okay. Like, you know, like you spending your money, you paying to be a judge. A hundred percent, we are. A hundred percent, we are. But it's like it is also fun to go in those situations, and it's the most fun to go in there with her and like be blown away by something, and then share that experience. Like to look at one another. And then you look at a view of like the Amalfi Coast is one of the most beautiful coastlines on the planet Earth. That's We only have a limited amount of coastline on planet Earth. And you're looking at it, you're the person you love, and you're like, I cannot believe. I'm here. I'm here. Man. And I'm, I'm in a postcard. That to me is so much more valuable than, I don't know, some Yo, stupid man. fucking. That's why you like White Lotus then. I, I thought I thought still, it was still rich people problems, but the, the it's immaculate. The I, setting. It, it's beautiful. The right. setting is beautiful, right. and and there's high stakes drama, which is murder. I like the fact that like there's people that potentially are going to die. Like I love Big Little Lies for that reason. That HBO show is it Big Little Lies? Right. Yeah. White people so problems. Look, I started to look that up and see where it's porn. at. Visual porn and right. also like brilliant storytelling. <laughs> like, yeah, like that's why you uh, like White Lotus. I'm like, I've never been to White Lotus. So I need a passport to go there. <laughs> 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 no, that, the, the White Lotus thing is really cool. I don't know. So for those experiences, like going to Burning Man, like Burning Man was really fucking expensive, but like the moments that you're there with your friends, you're seeing the fucking sunrise, you guys are smiling and 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 happy and Man, loving on one another. It's you like, said the realest shit because a couple weeks ago is my good sister Dolly Bishop's birthday. We, we, we flew down to where she lives at in North Carolina, and it literally was just like 15 of us at her house for the weekend. That's it. Sitting around the pool, doing plant-based medicines, drinking, talking, and that's that's it for me. That's it. Uh, I, I don't, like, that's, that's all I need. I need my people and those experiences. And to the other point, when I, I remember going to places like Anguilla, which y'all know is my favorite place mm -hmm. on the planet, going there and touring different places and I'm like, man, how much is this? Such and such a night. Like, shit. Who stayed here? Oh, you know, Justin Bieber or LeBron James. Like, yeah. fuck. Yeah. But then now it's like, oh, man. I could experience that. I've been that. doing that for the last yeah. five years. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, stuff's like that. But now, this is the other thing. Seeing, when you used to see like big groups on vacation. Oh, dude, like I love families. It. Yeah, yeah. I used to be like, yo, that'd be so cool to bring your family on yeah. vacation. To be able to do that yeah. Your mom, your nieces, your, yeah. your, your your sister, your friend, like everybody can, oh, that shit, there's nothing better, yo. Yeah, it's great. There's, there's nothing better. That is what money is for. But I, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm that type of person. Though. I'm the type of person, like I always say, if it only benefits me, it's not big enough. What are we doing that yeah. everybody 
can share in this I'll be experience. Honest. Yeah, nothing. How am I shaping my kids? Yep. My little nieces with with mentality with that type of shit. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I care about. No, it's beautiful. And that does benefit you ultimately. And like, you know, there's a reason why like doing things for others makes you feel good because we're supposed to do that. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, God only puts reward systems in our head for the things that we're supposed to do. We are smart enough to find like chemicals and mm-hmm. pharmaceuticals and shit that we can manipulate our brain to get those good feelings, but that ain't happen naturally. You know what I mean? Like naturally helping your friend makes you feel good. I don't know. Now. There's some yeah. good natural yeah, plant-based medications out there. Maybe so. maybe we shouldn't not do them. The weed? What I'm saying? Oh. Sugar. Ayahuasca? Also, also sugar's not natural. Shrooms? The weed is natural. Mm-hmm. And the old weed that was natural, natural, not the ones that we put the fucking chemicals in, barely gets you high compared to this weed right now. Shit is so Like stupid. you could smoke that and be regular, Man, normal, like, like function, fine. That new shit is crazy. It's, it's, it's crazy. I miss those days. And even the sugar, like if you think about natural sugars, like if you're just eating an orange, first of all, that shit is hard, bro. You got to peel that motherfucker. Like it takes time. If you're having orange juice, that's 20 oranges already peeled, squeezed into a cup. You're not supposed to drink that. But to that you're point, not supposed to. Hold, hold on, to that point. Yeah. It's a good point. If you walk in somewhere and you see an orange tree and you see a nice ripe orange off that tree and pull it off, there's nothing better. I'm, I'm saying that's right. You're supposed to have that many oranges. Is this but one of those times we're saying there. the same thing again? But yes, it's just, exactly. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. <laughs> we right. <laughs> we right. <laughs> no, we right. But yeah, that's the, I don't know. I think, yeah, I think it will, I think that it's built in. A lot of this stuff is built in. And as human beings, what we're going to do is try to get the most out of every situation. And sometimes that's to our detriment. Yes. You know, so it's like we're on our phone scrolling and it tricks us into like feeling good, but it's not right. It's It's not not the best thing for us. But then you're sitting on the beach in Anguilla and you're watching a sunset and you're like, why am I so happy? And it's like, well, yeah, because that's what we're supposed to do is sit on the beach and watch a beautiful sunset. Taking like, a dip in the ocean. That's it. Like waking up in the morning and you see that shit, you're like, yo, what the? F-? And by the way, it don't have to be in Angola. I'm just talking about beach and water. There it is. You know what I mean? Like there it anywhere is. in the world. Like, come on, man. That, uh, yeah, yeah. Money can't, there's certain things money can't buy. But I think the cool thing is, is getting to the point in life where, Listen, I'm sure there's everybody that's listening right now or watching right now that doesn't have money is, is going, well, let, let me prove you how m- much money can buy. Wait till I get some money. I'll how much prove, happiness. Yeah, 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 it could buy me some. And it's like, it's cool to get to the point where you have money and now you know the things that you want to buy with that are these experiences. They're not actual things. That's what I would tell anybody out there listening. Spend your money on experiences. Forget forget how much you have. All of us act your wage, right? But yeah. just spend the money on experiences. 100%. I just told you I had a ball in North Carolina. Like I, even though I'm from South Carolina, so it's home. Rent a Vespa with your wife and drive around fucking Rome and have the time of your life and stop and eat pizza at a random place and just have the best fucking day and then stop at the Trevi Fountain and just then look at the Spanish step. Like, just have a day where you're exploring yeah. and that will cost you way less than uh, some, I don't know, what is a crazy luxury that we buy that is completely unnecessary? It will cost you way less than a watch. It's an unnecessary, it will cost you way less than a watch, but it will provide so much more joy. And it's time you'll never forget. That's facts. You know what I mean? And it's all about the it's about community too. It's about people. Like I'm literally sitting here thinking, like, damn. Technically, a watch is time you will never forget to. <laughs> I don't even know. I don't even know time. that you knew what you just did. I don't even know if you knew what you just did. That was cold. I, I meant to do that. No, you didn't. I don't even remember what the fuck I said. You go, I go, I go, take the best for whatever. And he goes, and that's time you'll never forget. And I go, I was like, that's better than a watch. And he goes, and you go, and that's time you never forget. But technically a watch is the time. And you'll never forget it as long as you have it. I don't know what you said, but I know like if I put like some music behind it, you know what I mean? With that voice, that shit will hit. And I put what, you in black and what white. What device can you wear and you'll never forget the time? What device can you, a condom. Oh my God. What? <laughs> what? He's what? not trying to make a joke. He's being serious. <laughs> hold on. Hold he's on. like, he's hold like, on. where's the joke? I'm, I'm tell looking you why for. This is crazy, I'm gonna tell you why put, this is put, crazy. Put the camera on me. Put the camera on me. <laughs> this is. These are the times where I wish that the window in the studio was real, so I could throw Charlemagne out of it. Hold on. You know what I found out today? I found out through Dion Cole. Salute to Dion Cole. Dion Cole showed us this video where kids don't even know how to tell time 
on clock on 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 clocks like that, yeah. on actual clocks. Like these are teenagers, yeah, because they're so used to everything being digital, mm. right? And I go, yo, that makes a whole lot of sense because I've heard so many of these rappers talk about how they don't even set their watches. They don't give a fuck. It's about the look. I'll be honest, I don't set that shit. I set it every once in a while. Let me see. It's probably off right now. What time is it? This is. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So everything's digital. So they, they, they would look like they say shit like it's 9, 7, 36. What? Exactly. They don't know how to tell time on clocks. Like but that makes clocks. sense. I don't know how to tell time on a sundial. Huh? Exactly. <laughs> that was the clock before the clock, a sundial. Oh, I don't know I get what you're saying. saying. I get what yeah, you're you saying. just use the technology that is in front of you. Oh, I didn't even know this. This is Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel said kids can't tell time no more. That's because they're used to digital. I'm gonna pay, let's pay some bills. I'm, you know I'm getting else? it from all angles. <laughs> I'm getting it from all angles. I'm like, am I standing in the same room? Right? Is that brilliant so, idiots? Y'all know what I go through. Y'all know what I go through every single week. Okay? <laughs> Talk space. Where are you in your mental health journey? No matter where you are, talking to a therapist who is trained to help can make a huge difference. They can help you find a new outlook on life and help you recover your energy, confidence, and joy. At Talkspace, you can find the right therapist with the right training for you, okay? Talkspace is a new, more convenient way to find a therapist and to meet with them. Everything is done online. You find a therapist you feel closest to, you meet virtually wherever you're most comfortable on your schedule. So there's no missed work or scheduling childcare for an appointment. It's therapy designed for your life. Talkspace is private, secure, affordable, and your Talkspace therapist is always accessible to you. When you've met your therapy goals or simply want to cancel, Talkspace has a simple cancellation process and will work with you to get a prorated refund for unused time if applicable, okay? Talkspace is there for you to make your life better. If you have issues that come up, you don't have to wait for your next appointment. You can message your Talkspace therapist anytime through the app or schedule a live session if you need some FaceTime. And now, Get $100 off your first month when you go to Talkspace.com slash idiots to match with your dedicated therapist. Go to Talkspace.com slash idiots now to get $100 off. You want to do Blue Chew Shorts? Yes, sir. This episode is also brought to you by the GOAT Blue Chew. Hardest dick you've ever experienced in your life, fellas, ladies, whomever. The point is, Blue Chew, same active ingredients as inside Cialis or Viagra, but this is the chew that's the one that we rock with. It's the one that you rock with, and it's one that you need coming up. This is sweaty dick summer season, and ladies, I'm telling you, you're going to wish that your man was chewing it up and chewing it out. And the way that he could do that, and fellas, the way you can do that, literally, you can get your first month free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping is when you go to BlueChew.com, use the promo code IDIOTS. BlueChew.com, promo code IDIOTS, get after it. Now, let's get back to the show. Church announcement, Schultz. Yes, sir. Um, oh, we just added a show, Atlantic City, the Ocean Casino. Uh, we are doing that July 29th. Love Ocean Casino. Is it good? Love Ocean Casino. Oh, Christina. sick. All right, fire. This is one of my first time performing Love in that it. one. So Love we'll be Ocean down there. Um, that's like, uh, the pre-sale is on right now. Uh, Andrew is the password for that. Uh, we also added uh, some shows in Raleigh, North Carolina, add some shows in uh, West Nyack, New York. Um, and uh, we still got uh, a bunch more, theandrewschultz.com, but we're continuing to add dates. I'm very excited. Thank you so much, all the people that came out for VCon. That was insane. And uh, Gary, Indiana, that was awesome, man. So uh, it's awesome to be back on the road. I love it more than anything in the world. So it's, it's great to be back at it. TheAndrewShultz.com. I, I love Ocean Casino. I told y'all, uh, speaking of experiences, Atlantic City is a place that I go. For the gymnastics, right? Or the cheerleading? cheerleading but yeah. I'm able to just, there's something about Atlantic City that just makes me disconnect. I don't know what it is. Mm. And Ocean Casino is a great, a great spot. Um, church, I had a church announcement and I can't fucking remember right now. Maybe it'll come back to me. What the fuck? What the fuck, yo? I don't know. Just watch The Breakfast Club on BET. Uh, make sure you go get Finding Tamika. Make sure you go get Summer 85 on Audible. We have a very special uh, Audible announcement coming soon because we have a release coming very, 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 very soon. And I am so, so excited about this one. I'm taking this one very personal when this one drops. Really? Can we? Can you tell us a little bit? I don't, don't want to say, but just know it's coming really, really soon. Like in, in the next couple of weeks, we, we, we'll be making the announcement. And I'm taking this one. Uh, taking it very, This is a very, very personal one. To me, very personal. Wait, why? Um, because of who it is, what I know the person's been through, 
you know, seeing, 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 seeing the struggle, seeing how, you know, it's, it, listen, it's hard for ideas to come to fruition. You know that, Schultz. You know what I'm saying? When you have a creative vision and you have a project and, you know, you've been fighting, fighting, fighting to get it heard or seen in some way, shape or form. You yeah. know what I mean? That's why I just tell people all the time, just be patient. Just be patient, you know. Eventually, the right situation, the right opportunity will come along. And um, I just think this is the beginning of uh, so many amazing things for, you know, this individual. And I think it starts with this project, you know. Uh, what else we got, Taylor Gang? Would you ever want a $200 million house, yo? I, I guess it would depend on the house, to be honest with you. Jay-Z and Beyonce bought a $200 million house in California. Yeah. In Malibu. They're saying they paid all cash for it, too. Listen, they acting their wage. That's Jay-Z and Beyonce. Okay? They got it. But is there ever a reason, I guess is what I'm saying, I to have a $200 million house? Also, the, the cash thing is like a... That's not exactly like a real thing. Well, you can pay cash for your down payment. But they are saying they paid the whole thing cash. You have to pay cash for your down payment, but... I mean, they could. I mean, it, it could be a tax. I mean, you, you do stuff like that for taxes sometimes. You know what I mean? Like, you got to spend the money. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I think that what, what most people in this circumstance do, and I didn't know this until recently, this was even an option, and this is how, like, people with high net worth mm -hmm. can really have a huge advantage in, in, uh, in these types of circumstances, is um, you can pay... You can take a loan out on your assets, use that loan, that line of credit, oh yeah, as cash, buy the property, and then refinance it into a mortgage. So you get all your money back. Oh shit. So you pay off that loan and now you have a mortgage, right? So that's how a lot of rich people pay all cash for things without actually taking their money out of the stock market or taking their money out of the investments where it's already in. Mm. I never understood it. When I would see these people in New York buying their homes all cash, I'm like, who has all this fucking money to just buy cash? But it's lines of credit against their assets. Yeah. And that's how you don't take all your money out of Google or Apple or whatever you know, uh, stocks you have your money in. Go to that first paragraph, Taylor. Very, very smart. Smart, yeah. really smart. No, that's smart. Uh, 30,000 square foot compound along, uh, along the Pacific Ocean in Malibu. I mean, yeah, Malibu is just the most expensive stretch of land on the planet. And you know, I'm not, I'm not even going to say why would you buy a $200 million house. Yeah, I was Because I can see, I, I can see, I mean, first of all, it's Jay-Z and Beyonce, so they got the money. But I can easily see Jay-Z saying, if you walked around this house, you would understand why, <laughs> why, why I mean, it's worth $200 million. My, my assumption is that their business manager, their their advisors are, are telling them, and, and Jay-Z is, is obviously incredibly competent when it comes to like business decisions. Of course. But they're doing the numbers on the place like this, and they're going, hey, this home and this property is going to be worth $250 million within the next 10 years. But they already got the $88 million joint. That's, what I, that's the thing. You know, it's like, it's like. I think, I'll be honest with you, from what I've heard is a lot of people don't feel comfortable in LA and I've this is too. removed from LA. Mm. It's Malibu, but it's not LA. You're by the water. I'm sure it's gated to even get to it. They have this home in Bel Air, but anybody can go to Bel Air. Mm. Yeah. Anybody could drive right up to the fence, jump over that shit. Like there ain't that much private property. Yeah, bro. You jump over it's that almost, shit. You're gonna almost, be what, what do you think the insurance is on an oceanfront property given climate change and, you know, like the... Can, I wonder if you can even get insurance. That's what I'm saying. Like the insurance, unless it's up on a cliff, which a lot of stuff in Mal... No, Malibu's on the shore, I think. I mean, that's yeah, it right there. I think, that, I think that's it right there. Yeah, so this, I think, looks relatively well protected, but... Um, you can't protect against the ocean. You need insurance. Man, we need to shut our broke asses right. up, man. Act our ways. I think what yeah. happens when, like, you have this kind of money is that you don't... Like, you and I are having this conversation right now because we think about monthlies. We're going like, how much am I spending a month? Oh shit, the taxes are this, the maintenance is this, the fees are this, my, uh, what is it, a uh, HO, house of something, right. HOA is this. When you're worth billions of dollars, like that is a drop in the bucket. Like <laughs> you don't even care about the little fucking $15,000 you're spending in insurance and this. Not even billions. Billion. Not even a billion. Oh, hundreds of millions. Not even hundreds of millions. Whatever Charlotte got. <laughs> <laughs> Only thing you care about is everybody being trustworthy and, and, and crossing the T's and yeah. dotting the I's. But to, to that point, like, 
<laughs> you know, you'll see certain things and you might not even, you know, you're like, you might this not even is, look at it. You know what I'm saying? Like, there, there's a limited amount of beachfront property located around Los Angeles, California that has this level of luxury and privacy. Yeah. This is, if you look at, if you look at Malibu homes, beautiful. they're actually like, lunch boxes. They're usually stacked right up next to each other. If you're having an argument with your fucking brother, your neighbor's next door hearing the argument. Mm. That stretch, like I'd be surprised if that's actually in Malibu. I wonder if that's actually further up the beach, but it doesn't it's matter. Beautiful. But that stretch right there is so unbelievably rare, especially for that area of Los Angeles. And you're within like an hour, 45 minute drive from like downtown Los Angeles, mm. like for real business shit. This is to me, I mean like, it's, beautiful. it's just so rare. When you're looking at buying treasure, you're looking for rarity, right? I'm this not is mad a at piece it. of treasure. That's not even real estate. I'm like, not mad at it. It's, like, it's like buying your Antigua. They got that private beach right here. It's that Anguilla. Comp, Anguilla. And then yeah. have all their friends and family come. And no, it's out. beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I, I bet you there's not two other pieces of real estate in Malibu that look like that. No, it's beautiful. There might not be one other. It's, it's, Probably listen, not if it's the most expensive. <laughs> right? Like, yeah. I, I, I'm sorry, not even look like it like the, in terms of how the house is designed, yeah. but like actual physical property in oh. Malibu. Because if you look at typical Malibu homes, like look at the one Kanye owned. It's a fucking railroad. It's like Fire Island. Literally. Yeah. Perfect example. Yeah. yeah. So. God bless, man. Yeah. You yeah. know, you be looking at something like that and think that's so out of your realm of possibility and it might not be. But you got to think about what these people buy. Like, they're not buying a home and thinking that money is going out the drain. They're buying no, that's something a, that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's, that's an asset. That's an appreciated yeah. asset. Absolutely. So, so when our broke asses are, are 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 looking at a purchase like that, they're like, God damn, 200 down the drain. Because the most of the shit that oh, people- I never thought that. I, I know, but I'm saying the average person is buying, looking at a purchase, they go, wow, that's 200, 200 million that are gone. I I just want to know what the house does. <laughs> it, 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 Taylor? Oh my God. <laughs> Taylor? Ain't nobody Are buying you doing this million dollar underground. <laughs> okay? <laughs> of course it is underground, but that's not why it's worth 200 million. You see, I'm not saying that. He just asked what you have in it. Not that you have the underground. Okay. Um, Fuck you. Everybody be quiet. Fuck you. <laughs> everybody just. <laughs> So we're down, guys. <laughs> <laughs> just reel it in. Reel it in. Um, verify. <laughs> the funny shit is they can't hear Taylor. I know. So they think we tripping. I, <laughs> they looking at us like, what tell, the fuck? Tell, tell why do you think it's worth 200? Tell the people, why do you think it's I didn't worth say it's, I don't say this is why it's worth 200. All yeah. I'm saying is I'm sure they have a secret. Underground, that's all I'm saying. So if you were going to buy the apartment or the home and they were like, this is $200 million. And I want to see what the secret highways are, yeah. That's where that's where you find the value. Why not sure. just buy a secret highway? Yeah. Why not just build an underground bunker, Taylor, instead of spending $200 million? I'm sure that one has it already. That's what I'm saying. I think if it did, it would have told us in the... Uh, it, you know what? But it's it does. a secret. It does. It How, does. They shouldn't tell us. It, it, do, it goes right into the ocean, too. So, like, they can, like, go down into the underground thing How and you know walk this? out into the water. They can go out into the water, like, a half a million feet from what I was heard. Mm -hmm. So, if, like, something ever happens, the Carters will be tucked away under the Pacific Ocean. Look, and that's what I cool. expect from it. So, it is what it is. Okay. Let me be great. Go ahead. <laughs> you mean let you be great? You didn't no, buy because, the house? No, because I know. <laughs> <laughs> let me be great. Taylor, we love you. What up, uh, What a fucking idiot. Too. Verify Twitter accounts. Share fake. This is crazy. Verify Twitter accounts. Share fake image of explosion near Pentagon causing confusion. A fake image purporting to show an explosion near the Pentagon was shared by multiple verified mm -hmm. Twitter accounts on Monday, causing confusion and leading to a brief dip in the stock market. Local officials later confirmed no such incident, incident had occurred. But y'all want fucking AI. Why? Why? Y'all think y'all can handle Why? AI. Why? Why? <laughs> y'all think y'all can handle fucking AI. Y'all can't handle fake tweets and fake photographs. That's only the beginning of what's to come, people. Well, what's the end of what's to come? Civilization. <laughs> Something bad gonna happen. This is the, this is the, we've been waiting on the Orson, we uh, Orson Welles War of the World type shit to happen. This is gonna be it. Guaranteed. It's gonna be a catastrophic event that's not even fucking real that everybody's gonna lose their fucking minds for. Government officials aren't gonna know what to do. I don't know if it's gonna be Hey, 
We just heard this world leader say they got a nuclear bomb headed towards us right now. You got 25 minutes. How long it take nuclear weapons to get here, Chris? 25 minutes, 30 minutes? Around 25, 30 minutes to fucking react. What do you do? You gotta verify it's real for us. You do you, if you're a world leader, do you have to sit around and be like, well, how do we know it's real? Verify it's real. Who, who we get on the phone? Whatever. Hmm. Before you fucking press the button back. Yeah, you have to do that. Yeah. Do you have time? What well, if you don't have time? You have to do it. <laughs> what if you aren't even on speaking terms with the country already? You still have to do it. Nah, well, that's what they get paid the big bucks for, dude. Do they? They don't get paid big bucks at all. No, they don't. Elected officials? Well, they find ways to get their money. I don't know, man. I just know that this shit is going to be fucked up. This is the beginning of so much fucked up shit. It, a dip in the stock market happened. This bullshit is affecting the world in real ways, and we've seen nothing yet. So here's so, where... You, go, 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 go. <laughs> you think it's going to lead to the end of humanity? Well, I don't think that. The people who have created this shit think that. No, but you just said it. Yeah, I've been saying this before I heard Elon Musk. I, that's just common sense, because I know humans can't handle this shit. We talked about something earlier, and we didn't say mutually assured destruction, but it's just like how humans can't help themselves. Mm. Humans, we, we cannot help but touch a hot stove. How, confident, how confidently do you believe that? What? We're willing to put a, another wager on that one? Alex, what does it matter? You fucking idiot. My know, God. That I'm was just saying. That was, that was very Taylor like Alex. I'm no, not I'm just yeah, saying. Don't hit me. What does it matter? Man, I'll tell the court I'm going to bet you that the end of the world happens. So, right before the world ends, <laughs> yeah, you got to up. Like, yeah, you got to do that. <laughs> no, no. Okay. You got to cash it. This is bet, what bro. I would say. This is where AI becomes tricky. Ready? Mm -hmm. There are current. Okay. When AI is also relying on AI, in other words, there are stock portfolios that are managed by mathematical computations that are seeing fluctuations in the market and then making knee-jerk trades without human beings justifying or allowing or acknowledging those trades. They're just making those trades in real time. And I heard they've been doing a good job, too. Of course, they've been doing great. Right, they're they're out competing humans, or else That's we would just heard. have humans. Yeah. But if those things are reacting to fake AI news without being able to verify it, now you have AI that can be manipulated reacting, or or AI reacting to AI. So because there's no human to interface here and be like, is this a real story? Should we trade based on this? Those trades will just go straight through. When they do go straight through, you'll see these dips and fluctuations in the market, and that can be used to make money. For example, you could short a stock, release a fake short story on AI. Now, all of a sudden, stock drops. You make your sale or you, whatever it is, uh, sell short. your short, and then and then you can make tons of money. I mean, this is almost like a bond. Uh, our, you, could, you could short an airline, create a fake airline disaster where three planes from a certain airline all manage to crash together. The stock will tank in ten minutes. And it's so all, you're short, and, and you out shorted of here. it, and you're good. Now, of course, they was doing that with uh, they was doing that with fucking GameStop and all that shit on Reddit. Remember when they was doing that type of shit on um, yep. what was that shit called? The bump stocks, but, I think it was called. But, but that was more of a reaction to hedge funds trying to squeeze out GameStop. Mm -hmm. But I thought they were reporting like fucked up stories. And so it was something they were doing on Reddit that was manipulating the stocks Think and of making it, the stocks to drop crazy. Well, well, the opposite. It was yeah. it was building up the stock. Oh, it was building up the stock. Okay, okay, and okay. And they okay. were doing that to punish these hedge funds that were trying to short the stock into gotcha, a, gotcha, a position gotcha, gotcha, where gotcha. the stock and the company itself would fail. So think of like the hedge fund as like the billion dollar corporation and think of uh, Wall Street bets as like the union that's part of that corporation. The only equal and opposite reaction to a single billionaire who has all this power is tens of thousands of workers yeah. that can decide to not do it. So they fucked over those hedge funds that were trying to fuck over the company. It was a really beautiful thing that happened. Yeah. And so you don't think they'll develop AI that will be able to detect when there's AI generated news? That I think comes they out? will. And I think in, in this interim period, it's yeah. going to be. 
It's but, gonna be but how tricky. much disasters have to happen before that. And he's right. So so basically, <laughs> he's like, what we're ba- we're gambling on right now is hopefully not bi- a big enough disaster will happen before AI can calculate if the news story is fake and based on AI. Yeah. And that's the fingers crossed. Say something I, else yeah. too. Ian, bro, I love you. It's over though. What uh, in our Master sentence, investor? Oh, don't do that to Ian. Come <laughs> on, son. Come on, son. Ah, <laughs> stop. Ian, stop. Bro, it's over. Why? No, why? Why? Enjoy why? these good old days. Why? <laughs> Ian, Ian. So you ain't shit. Tell them not to invest in AI. <laughs> That's what that Ian. No, for real. Yeah. Ian, I was. Ian, tell them not to invest in AI because AI is trying to take people like you out. Okay. What do I need Ian for? Human intuition. Yep. What? No, now, not speaking about Ian, because Ian's a very smart, intuitive brother. That's that's actually why yeah. Ian is Ian. Most humans don't have that anymore, Schultz. But what I'm saying is you could make the argument that his value would increase in a time where... Ve- he's very rare, though. That's good. That's you good. want rarity. Yeah. That's the he's $200 million dollar, uh, home in Malibu. Most people that they have that will be monitoring this shit are going to have to call 20 other people to figure out if if this shit is fucked up. 100%. You know what I'm saying? 100%. And that's, I don't think everybody's built for this, man. I just don't think we're, I don't think the average human, I don't even think some of the above average humans are built for AI. Mm. I really don't. Mm. I really don't. Not when you have the Elon Musk of the world and the other dude that, you know, created ChatGPT telling us this shit is above us now, yo. Mm. Like, I, I really think it's just a great opportunity where we're going to have a bunch of new millionaires and billionaires just like during uh, COVID because people are going to figure out ways to utilize AI to get rich How and to build generate. I mean, because if the AI takes up, this is another thing I was thinking about. If, and I think we talked about this, but if AI gets rid of all the jobs, let's say AI replaces 300 million jobs. What it was, what, how America is going to get money? Universal basic income? <laughs> no, I think that the other jobs will pop up. Like what? AI is replacing everything from McDonald's workers to financial advisors to paralegals. I mean, this is not like, the first time an industry has been been yeah. wiped out. I mean, not people like used, this. This is I different. know, I know, I know. But people used to get around on horseback. Now they get around in cars. Like the people that worked on those horses, their kids had to transfer to other positions. Maybe they had to work on cars. You know, like there's definitely different things that people can do that are going to be, you know, in cahoots with AI. I support. hear everything y'all saying, but this is different. Like this is like, and, and I actually. Has AI I'm, done anything good besides make like Biggie sing? That uh, shit was fire. Yeah, like that was the first AI song I heard. That was fire. It was cool. The Mini Men shit with oh. Biggie doing the hook and Tupac rapping Mini no, Men. The, the most fire oh, one that was, shit was fire. Frank Sinatra doing fire. That one was crazy. Kind of fell off a little bit when it got to the uh, skeet skeet motherfucker. That line was great. But the, but the beginning <laughs> part, um, oh skeet skeet, goddamn! I like the beginning Dude. man when he was like um. Uh, how that's how, how, how Lil John get Lil Go on? He's like, so the sweat drips Drift down, down my, my balls. balls. That shit was fire. Son, there we go. That that's shit was the, fire. That's the best that AI has provided us so far. Yep. Well, that's shall we what do they some do. asking idiots? Yeah, that's what they do. They they rock us to sleep with entertainment. Mm. <laughs> and while we busy singing Frank Sinatra, the sweat drips right. down my balls. The world is going to shit. There you go. Give them bread and circus. That's a great opportunity for anybody paying attention. For what? How though? How though? So, all right, let's say it's wiping out three hundred million jobs allegedly. So, let's say m- m- my industry, for example, I have a studio. We make you're done. Wait, look, we make, <laughs> look, 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 watch, 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 watch. <laughs> so you <laughs> can't. Don't. The the AI doesn't just know what to do. Someone still has now. to tell. See, you're not thinking. You, you this shit is now. But, it doesn't. But look, and, and give so, it a minute. Al, so you're so, not gonna get this out. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. So just, but but, but you, you you do realize when the guy stepped down from Google, yeah, you know the reason he stepped down, right? Wasn't he, just to warn people. You know what the reason was? What he knows the danger, the potential danger he that said could come this with this shit him. is evolving at such a rapid pace. Yeah, they're not gonna need you, Alex. I get that. By the end of the year, we're not going to know what AI could potentially do. I get do. that, but people still have to figure it out. People still have to figure out how to use it. So, like, right now, I'm utilizing it to make my business more efficient. So, like, now I'm telling people that I have that they cut clips and stuff like that. I'm like, hey, you get need to get on this. Utilize how to make your job 
more efficient and now you can cut more clips and make more money what and about, we what, what are about, more productive. What about when the AI stops listening to you and does what it wants to do? I see, but now you're doing all this no, that's, like, what the, that's what the guy, that's what the CEO of ChatGPT is saying. That's what the dude who stepped down from Google is saying. That's what Elon Musk is saying. That's why they're saying pump the brakes on this shit. I'm sure there's And that's what you just said with the, with the stock thing. How do we know that all those people that are saying that are just trying to give themselves time to develop their own AI? How, how do we you know, do we Elon. know? This is what Elon's doing. Yes. Elon is working on his own AI. There's, yeah, yep. there's other things that, there, like, other companies are working on their AI and what they want is everybody to slow the fuck down because open AI is so far ahead of everybody. Yep. Google tried to drop theirs. It kind of flopped. There were some issues. I think Microsoft tried to drop theirs. It flopped. There were some issues. So they're all like, we need to put the clamps on this AI thing because they don't have their version of it just yet. Yep. Hey, y'all can say what y'all want. I love yep. the optimism, but I'm with Ice Cube. I'm suing anybody who motherfucking manipulates. As you should. Yeah. Ask an idiot. Because Let's when go. that Andrew <laughs> Schultz stand-up special comes out, as long as I'm getting paid. And it's AI show. As long as I'm getting paid. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're you going to feel differently. Uh, yeah. What do we got? Asking idiots. Yeah, I don't want to go. Asking idiots. <laughs> okay. Uh, I loathe you all. This is for Charlotte. Being from the South, have you ever heard of the air wax test before you get some? <laughs> Listen, young <laughs> man or young woman, stop playing with me. Okay. <laughs> I'm the one that told y'all about the motherfucking earwax yeah. test. All right, I know you might be 20, so you know you knew here. So you was 10 when we was out, out, out when we was outside, outside. Okay, you was 10, so you're probably a new brilliant idiot listener. I appreciate you, but I'm the one who bought the earwax test main screen. What Taylor? <laughs> Get Taylor the mic. No Taylor. Yeah. What did you say? What did you say? What did you say, Taylor? What? You're putting your finger in the girl's ear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> That's exactly how it happens, Tim. <laughs> Why are you trying to seduce her that way? You have weird ways Next to seduce. Next question. Seducing a girl is digging question. in her yeah. ear. Chris Robinson, 34. Philly is a wild place, boy. <laughs> with the success... <laughs> and here's had, a place. Taylor, with the success that he's had at Marvel, do y'all think James Gunn will make DC cool again? Sharla. Is that my guy, Chris? Is that Chris Chris? No. Is that Chris who used to work at uh, Marvel? I don't know if that's Chris. He's wrong. Salute to Chris if that is. That's my guy. Um, will he make DC cool again? Yeah, if the movies are good. Like, I mean, listen, everything goes in cycles, right? Like, Marvel had a, a decade-long run of dominance. You know what I mean? Some people are questioning Marvel right now. So if DC comes out and, you know, they start somewhere, maybe, maybe the Flash is the new start. If they start with the Flash, we, we might be looking at the Flash 10 years from now, the way we looked at Iron Man 10, 10 11 years ago. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You just, you never know. Like, it's just literally about the product. You know, I'm, nothing is historically whack. Mm. You know, DC is not whack by any means. It's just that the DC movie universe <laughs> has not been good. The DC comics are, are cool. They're decent. You know what I mean? I, I mean, some people will say more than cool. The DC cartoons are fire. Yeah. I like the DC... Mar uh, the DC movies that are about the bad guys, the Harley Quinn and the Joker and shit like that. So, yeah, I mean, DC can be cool. It's just all about the product at the end of the day. I don't have anything, like, I'm not against DC. It's just the shit hasn't been good. Yeah, once it's good, what is it? Uh, victories heal, heal all wounds? Yeah. Um, what's your retirement look like for y'all and around what milestone, question mark? That's from H O H underscore S E. What does retirement look like for you? I mean, retire. They always. I, I was always told retirement's not an age; it's an income. I don't believe that. I used. To, I used to think that when I heard it because it sounds good, mm -hmm. but that's not true. Because if that was the case, it'd be plenty of billionaires who would have hung it up already. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I think as long as you love what it is you do. And you have a drive to do what it is you do. My purpose is different, though. Like, I, my drive is I, I literally like putting people in position. Hmm. That's what I like. I like I like being the exec. That's what I like. I don't know what everybody else trying to do. I don't know. Maybe everybody else trying to stick in front of the cameras and the microphone for a long time. I like seeing that next person do what it is they do. I like being responsible for stuff like that. You know what I mean? That's what I like. And so for me, if, if, if retirement, retirement probably would look like just doing that. 
like sitting around getting my my my, my Clarence Avon on. You know, I think that's good. Yeah, I think for me, if it's like actual retirement, retirement, like there's gonna be a point in my life where. Like right now, I'm really happy when I'm working constantly and I have a lot of things to do and my mind is focused on these goals that I'm trying to achieve. And I would really like a part of my life to be dedicated towards finding joy in the opposite in doing nothing and in enjoying a beautiful day and not feeling like I have to accomplish things to feel good about myself, like to just be able to fully kind of let go and relax and enjoy the things I have around me, you know, my family, my friends, you know, children, all the things mm -hmm. that, so that would be, that is a goal at a certain point in my life. And obviously I want to get the financial security first so I can do that. But uh, that, that is definitely a goal in retirement. Let me ask you this. We can end on this because this is, a, I was thinking about this, right? You're a stand up comedian. I'm a, I'm a media personality, you know, or whatever. Right. And it's like, you, 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 you still would probably want to do stand up if you felt like there were things that nobody else was saying. Yeah. Like if you were looking at the field, yeah. and you're like, damn, there's nobody else saying this thing. Like even if you went yeah. and found other people and poured into them, they still not saying this thing. Yeah. I think that's what probably would keep you going. Cause I know for me as a as a radio personality, it's like I look around the field and it's like, damn, man, it feel like Everybody doing what I was doing 10 years ago. So it's like, yeah. whack now. And then you look yeah. and you're like, well, did, did I look like that? Did I yeah. sound like that? Yeah. Like, yeah. What's, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like when you see everybody doing the same shit, it's like, all right, so what's, let's, let's figure out what's next. I agree with you. You know what I mean? Yeah, like being at the forefront is really important. You know, I, I see it obviously with you and, and, you know, with me as well. It's like, how can we be doing something that nobody else is doing? And part of being at the forefront is understanding that, that there are going to be other people that are influenced by you. And that's beautiful. You want to share the things that you kind of create with mm -hmm. other people and you hope that they have success with them. But at the same time, what makes you a trailblazer is by wanting to do something different than everybody else. So you just got to keep on doing different things. And that's the cool, fun motivation. How can you take it to the next level? Yeah, because, you know, I, I pay attention to everything. I'm, I, I pay, even if I, I, may, I may not acknowledge everything, but I pay attention to a lot of things. And I, I constantly hear people reference Breakfast Club or reference Brilliant Idiots as... You know, their template yeah. to a lot of things. And, you know, I'd be like, yeah, but, you know, you're, you're doing, like, our old shit. And you're really not doing it to the highest level because there's a difference in talking about people. There's a difference between talking about people and talking to people. Mm. I think that's something people forget, right? Yeah. You can go pull up interviews and conversations with me talking to people and telling them those things I would say when they weren't around. Yeah, it's, it's easy to talk about. It's easy, to, it's easy to set up a podcast in your basement or at your friend's house or wherever and like talk about people. Yeah. But the real conversations and real understanding happens when you talk to people. Yeah. But I'm a, I've always said I'm a curious person, right? That's yeah. why, you know, even with the shock jock label, cool. But I'm a curious person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So being that I'm a curious person, a lot of things that I say come through curiosity. I want to know why this person is like that or why did they do sure. this or what made them say this, blah, blah, blah. So it might come with jokes and whatever else, but when I'm talking to that person, I'm going to say it to them. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think that's why people never really had a problem coming to have those conversations with me because they realize yeah. this dude ain't just slandering, performing, yeah. whatever, whatever. The people I have done that to haven't had conversations with me. Yeah. <laughs> you understand yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah, that's, up, think that's about, on Think them. about that. That's on them, yeah. The people I've actually, when, I, when I'm in performative mode and I'm just saying shit to say shit, those people haven't had conversations with me. But the curious ones, I'm, I'm actually expressing curiosity. Those people have come and sat down. So I would just say, I just feel like it's the difference between, you know, talking about people and talking to them. Everybody's talking about people now. That I, shit ain't impressive. I, I, will, I would say this, though, is that I think creatively, especially when you're in your, like, uh, adolescence, you need a North Star. You need someone that you look up to and someone you admire. And I'm sure you had somebody that you're like, oh, I love how they're doing it. It doesn't mean that you have to do it exactly like them. Yeah. But, like, their authenticity is what inspires your creativity and makes you want to be authentic. So we have to accept it. Like, we are that 
for people. We might be that for them in podcasting. You might be that for them in media. I might be that for them in stand up. And that's awesome. And that's an honor, you know, and they hopefully will continue to curate things and then find their own lane. But in the beginning, you just need to know that there's someone who's who looks at the world kind of like you do, even though they're way better than you, and then just following that because it gives you some comfort. You know, like I remember seeing Patrice O'Neill and then being like, holy shit, like th- there it is. Like there's the best version of stand up. And it just gave me hope that I wasn't crazy. Like I had an idea of stand up I wanted to do despite it doing poorly some nights or, or good in other nights. But then seeing it done at the highest level, I was like, okay, this is good. This this is it. This this it can be done, etc. So um, yeah. that's so interesting, man. Because the difference between like you said, you saw that in Patrice, but imagine if you would have got to see the whole totality of Patrice. I know. Like we've seen like the whole totality of a Dave, yeah, or the whole totality of a Howard Stern, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, or even these young NBA players, they've seen the whole totality of a Bron. Mm-hmm. So it's like. Why not look at the best version of that person? Don't get me wrong. We all got to go through whatever we got to go through. But why, why, if you've seen somebody for 15 years, 20 years, whatever it is, why get the worst you look at the, parts of them? I think you look at the parts that serve what you need in that moment. Mm-hmm. So it's like sometimes that is the best. Like there's a kid out there who's like, fuck, I didn't even know that I could be dealing with mental health issues. And I read this guy's book and like really helped me understand myself. And it's really helped me. That's like, that's probably what you would argue is one of the best parts of you. That's the be- To me, that's the best to version. You, yeah, to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, but there's yeah, yeah. another young kid that loves busting balls. That and loves sniffing those seats. Mm-hmm. Real talk. And, and, and he doesn't know that he has anxiety about keeping things in. So he just has to get things out. And he sees somebody else do it and get rewarded for it and is hilarious and is like, and all of a sudden starts going, oh shit, I'm not a weirdo. There are other successful people that are like me. I got my North Star yeah. right now. And then maybe he will 20 years later, like you, get to a point in his career where he's like, oh shit, I got to work on some of these things. There, there's a reason no, why won't. I was so compulsive. No, they won't. Come on, Only you could do no, that. No, 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 yeah, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. I'm telling y'all, young stupid yeah. motherfuckers. No, no, listen. I'm telling all you young stupid motherfuckers watching this right now. If you do what I was doing 12 years ago, uh, you are not yeah. going. Uh, <laughs> you are not. They're not letting y'all do make those kind of mistakes no yeah. more. You're gonna be stuck on YouTube. Yeah. Owning your YouTube page. Yo, God bless YouTube. <laughs> YouTube is the goat. Word That's where bond. we want to be. Word is bond. Nothing wrong with YouTube. But, nothing wrong with YouTube, but it ain't. You know, if 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 you if you want to do more. Yeah, you're limiting okay. yourself. So that um that question about retiring, you said that the main thing you look forward to now is like the executive role, putting people on and watching the next ones come up. So I'm curious, why do you still do what you're doing now? Like the media I side. It. I love it. I still got to yes. drive for it. And I feel like everybody's doing the same thing. So it's like, yo, let me show, let me, sh- let me, sh- let me, the way y'all studied whatever first, however many, I've been doing radio 25 years. That first half of what y'all studied, let me show y'all what it looks like uh. when a person grows and evolves, especially in fucking hip hop. I said this on Vlad TV the other day. It's like, yo, we put ourselves in these boxes. And you know, I look at it from, I watch it from learning. I learn it from watching rappers. You got the rapper who came in the game, talking that gangster shit, talking that hood shit, talking that thug shit. Never stop doing that. Eventually, they hit that glass ceiling. You look up and you think it's, you think you know you can go farther, but you hit that glass ceiling. But then there's Jay Z, who constantly grows and evolves with every album. You know, he does an album. He's talking about therapy, fatherhood. You know, uh, uh, trying to be a good man. His his his, his wife. Nas rapping about brunch on fucking Sundays, <laughs> making some of the best music of his career. You know what I mean? On top of all of the great business investments and everything that he makes now, like he's been a part of two billion dollar acquisitions. He's been investing in two things that have been sold for over a billion dollars. Like I'm looking at those guys, and I'm realizing, like, like I said, look at a look at the whole totality of a person. I still love what it is that I do, and I look forward, especially with Breakfast Club to helping whoever we put in that third throne being able to assist them in taking the fuck off. Mm. Even more than that person probably already has taken the fuck off. 
You know, that's the type of shit I like. I look forward with Black Privilege Publishing, putting out people's books, helping people tell their stories. Same thing with SBH Productions, you know, putting out audio scripted content that eventually turns into television and movies and documentaries, you know, same thing with my production company, See the God World. Same thing with Black Effect Podcast Network. Like, that's what I like to do. I like watching motherfuckers take off. That's what's fun to me. But people who bring something different to the marketplace. Because right now I feel like everybody doing the same thing. And that's a, that's sh that's the shock jock thing, and I don't see how that shit is sustainable. If everybody's doing if it. everybody's doing, it. you know what I mean. I just don't see it. Um, okay, that's it. As always, if you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening.